Should you run a one product store or a general store? It's the age old debate and now you need not worry about the answer because in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can actually combine a one product store and a general store. So you can have multiple different one product stores under the same website. So you don't have to go and create a different one product store every time you want to test a product and you don't have to have an old fashioned and tacky looking general store so that you can go and test multiple different products. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and give this video a big thumbs up and let's get straight into the video. So let's have a look at the one product times general store that we will be building today. So we'll be showing you how to build these one product funnels just like I am showing you now, but how they can all be tested under the same website, so under the same domain. So that means every time you want to test a new product in the one product format, you don't have to create a new store from scratch, and you don't just have to go and test multiple different products using a general store. You can go and test loads and loads of different products in the one product format, but all under the same domain. And as you can see, they're really nice, they're really easy on the eye, they've got all of the information included, and they are optimized to try and make sales. So as you can see they're all looking really good and the really great thing about this method is that all of these products have their own checkout page so they have their own custom checkout page so if I go to order now over here you can see that this product has its own custom checkout page so it's all completely branded to this product if I go over to this one over here and I click order once again it has its own custom checkout page just like this and then once again let's just go for this one for example if I go to the checkout page for this product once again it has its own custom checkout page so that's a really great thing about using this method is that for every product you test it's all completely custom but once again like I said it's under the same domain so it's basically a general store but you're using the one product store format to go and test the different products so like I said you don't have to go and create multiple different stores you can all do this all under one store and I'll be showing you how to go and create this without any coding it's just completely drag and drop and really easy to do and also be showing you how you can go and create the other pages such as the contact us page over here and also some of the other pages such as the privacy policy so if we just go or for example the terms of service so how you can go and create these and once again you can see with these you don't need to have a home page or anything like that you don't need to build a logo you can just go and build all of these one product funnels under the same domain. So now that we've had a look at the one product times general store that we will be creating today, let's start from the beginning by purchasing some hosting. The first thing that we need to do in order to start building out our website is to purchase some hosting. And hosting is basically what allows your website to be live on the internet. Now I use SiteGround to host all of my websites because they're a really reliable hosting provider and they're relatively cheap. So if anything ever goes wrong with your website, you can just contact them through live chat and they usually fix it really quickly. Now there is a link in the description to SiteGround and if you click on that link, you will be brought over to this page over here. Now from here, we can go and have a look at the different hosting packages that SiteGround provide. So if we go to hosting and click on WordPress hosting over here, and from here we can see that they have three different packages. So we've got Startup, Grow Big, and Go Geek. Now if, you're, if you just wanna start with one website, you can go for the startup plan. You can build one website, you get a free SSL certificate. So that means you get the little padlock over here in the URL that tells your users that your site is secure and you can also go and create a free professional email address. Now if you ever want to go and create multiple websites you can always go for the grow big plan but don't worry if you just start off with the startup plan you can always upgrade your plan to grow big if you do want to go and create multiple websites. Now from here you just need to go and click on get plan and from here you can go and choose a domain name. Now when choosing a domain name, I always like to use a site called Lean Domain Search. So leandomainsearch.com, I will leave a link in the description to this as well. And basically what it allows you to do is just go and type in a term and then it brings up all of the different domain names that are available with that term in. So what you can do is you can see I've just typed in hut, I've sorted it by length and I've sorted it so that it ends with the search term. And now we can see that we've got loads of different domain names that end with the word hut. So we could go, for example, let's say Union Hut or Rapid Hut. Now, when it comes to building a one product store times a general store, so when we're combining them, you can just go and choose a, any sort of name. It doesn't really matter. Something like Amazon, for example, it's not anything to do with the particular products that you're selling. So you could just go for something like, let's say Union Hut, so you can come back over to SiteGround and you can just go and type in Union Hut 
and I always recommend choosing a .com domain. So just go for that and then just go and click on proceed. Now from here, all you need to do is complete the final steps to purchase your SiteGround hosting. So you need to just go and sign up with your email, pick a password, then you're just gonna go and enter in your personal information. So your first name, your last name, and your address and phone number. And then you're just gonna go and enter in your card details so that you can go and pay for your hosting. Now from here, you can go and choose different packages. So you can go for 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, or you can just try one month if you want. But I recommend just starting off with the 12 months. And then from here, you can go and add domain privacy and the SG site scanner on if you want to. Now, personally, I don't think these things are very necessary. So the domain privacy just means that nobody can see who actually registered the domain. Now, if you don't have this, it just means you might get contacted by people offering you SEO services and web design services and things like that. So it's not really a big deal. And the SG site scanner just monitors your site to make sure that it isn't down. But generally, because the site ground hosting is so good, your site really won't go down very often anyway. Now, once you have done that, you can just go and confirm that you've read the terms of service and the privacy policy. And then all you need to do is click on pay now. Now, once you click on pay now, you should be brought over to your SiteGround dashboard. Now, it should look a little something like this, but it does, if it doesn't look exactly like this, then don't worry, because all you need to do is go and click on websites over here. Now, when you click on websites, you should see your domain name over here, and it's gonna say site tools. So from here, we can go and install an SSL certificate and also install WordPress onto our domain. So from your domain over here, go and click on site tools. And when you click on that, you will be brought over to the site tools dashboard. Now from here, firstly, we can go and install the SSL certificate. And like I said earlier, the SSL certificate is what allows us to have this little padlock in the URL over here. And that is basically what tells our customers and the users of our website that our website is secure. Especially if you are creating an e-commerce website, you really need this because nobody's gonna go and shop on your website if they don't think it is secure. So we're gonna go to security over here and we're gonna go to SSL manager. And from from here you can go and select your domain so you should have your domain over here and then from here we're just going to go and choose let's encrypt so it's going to say select SSL choose let's encrypt and just click on get once you do that it will just say your request is being processed so just wait a few moments now once that has finished installing it will say let's encrypt is installed for your domain now what we need to do next is go to HTTPS enforce over here so click on HTTPS enforce and just go and tick this on so now that means that our site will be fully secure within the URL over here. So what we can do next, now we can go and install WordPress. So go to WordPress over here and click on install and manage. And then we're gonna go and select WordPress. Then you're gonna go and select your domain over here. For installation path, just leave that blank. And from here, we can go and choose a username and a password. So for your username, you're gonna to want to go and choose something that you're going to remember. And basically these details here are what we are going to use to log in to our WordPress website. So make sure that you go and choose something that is memorable and make sure that you go and save it somewhere so that you can go and have access to it if you ever do forget it. Now, one thing I do recommend is use the generate button that was over here earlier to go and generate a password because this is going to go and generate something that's a lot harder to guess. So don't just use your typical type of password that you might use because that's gonna make it easier for people to hack your website. So go and use the random generator and then you can just go and copy the password and go and save it in a Word document or in a notepad file. And also make sure that the email you use here is an email address that you can access because like I said, if you ever forget your login details for your WordPress website, you can always go and get them emailed over to you at this address. So once you have gone and done all of that, then just go and click on install. Once WordPress has finished installing, you will see WordPress is installed on your domain and now you will see what's next. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna go and click on admin panel to go over to our WordPress dashboard. So go and click on admin panel over here and then from here we will be brought over to our WordPress dashboard. Now, don't worry about this site ground setup because we don't need to go through this because I'm gonna show you how to set up the entire website. So what we can do is we can scroll down and we can just go and click on exit. Now, once we click on that, we will be brought over to our WordPress dashboard. Now, from here, I'm just gonna go and show you a few things within your WordPress dashboard, and then we can actually start building out the site. So from here, you will see a few different tabs down the side here. So firstly, we have the dashboard. Now, this is basically just any news about WordPress and things from SiteGround, so any updates and things like that. Then we have updates. So when you actually install themes and plugins, which give your website different functionality, every time they need to be updated, they will be within the update. 
updates over here. Then we have posts. So because WordPress was originally a blogging platform, you could go and create different blog posts. Now for this website that we're creating today, we probably won't really be using this very much because we're not gonna be really be focusing on creating blog posts. We're gonna be focusing on creating funnels so that we can go and sell products. Then we've got media. So every time you upload an image or a video to your site, it will go into your media library. But this can just be done from the front end. When you're actually building the site, you can go and upload images from the front end. So you might not really need to use the media library very often either. Then we have pages. Now we'll be using this quite regularly throughout the tutorial. So every time you create a new page, for example, the about us page, the privacy policy, the terms of service, you will be doing that from the pages section. Then we have comments. Now, like I said, because WordPress was originally a blogging platform, when people used to leave blog comments, it would go into the comments section. Now, for a e-commerce website, this is mostly used when people leave reviews. So if somebody leaves a review on your site, that will be left into the comment section. Then we have appearance. So from here, we can go and change the theme, which we will be doing in this tutorial. We can go and create menus and things like that. And then we have plugins. So we'll be using this quite frequently throughout the tutorial. So plugins is basically something that allows you to add extra functionality to your WordPress website. So for example, to give you the ability to import products from AliExpress, you would do that by installing a plugin. Then we have users. So you can go and set up different users on your website. So for example, if your e-commerce website was to start getting a lot of sales and you wanted to hire a virtual assistant, you can set them up as a user and they won't have admin rights, but they can still go and log into the back end and go and fulfill orders. So you can go and set up different users then we have tools so this just allows you to import and export data from your site so once again we won't really be using this very often and then we have settings where you can just go and change other different things like the name of the site over here so instead of my WordPress you can go and change the name of the site so that is basically just a very brief tour of the WordPress dashboard now that we have done that the first thing that we are going to do in order to start building our WordPress website is to go and install a theme so in order to install a theme onto our WordPress website we're going to go to appearance over here and we're going to go to themes now from here we're going to go and click on add new and from here we're going to go and search a theme so just go and type in Astra over here so we're going to search for, for the Astra theme now this is one of the best free themes that WordPress offers so what we can do is we can just go and click on install over here and once that has finished installing, we can just go and click on activate. So now we have this theme activated, we can just go and delete some of these other themes because they're just taking up space on our WordPress website and we don't need to take up un any unnecessary space for no reason. So what we can do is we can just go and click on theme details and just go and click delete over here. And then once again, we can just do that with this one as well. Click theme details and just click on delete. Now we do have this one over here as a backup. It's always good to have a backup theme just in case for whatever reason this theme crashes, then we can always have a backup so it doesn't mean our site is completely down. So now that we have gone and installed a theme, the next thing we are gonna do is install a page builder. So we are gonna be using a page builder called Elementor that allows you to go and drag and drop elements in order to go and build out your website. So go to plugins over here and go and click on add new. And from here, we can go and type in Elementor. So go and type in Elementor. And then we're just gonna go and click on install on this one, Elementor Page Builder. And then we are gonna go and hit activate once it has been installed. So the we are also gonna go and install another plugin. So go back over here to plugins and click on add new. And we are just gonna go and install this classic editor plugin. Now, basically WordPress updated their editor and I don't really personally like the new editor. So we're gonna use the classic editor. So just go and hit install on this. And then we're just gonna go and hit activate on this plugin as well. So now that we have activated the classic editor plugin, we are going to now add a plugin that allows us to create multiple different one product funnels within the same website. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to add new over here. And from here, we're gonna go and type in cart flows. So go and type in cart flows. So let me just type in flows. So type in cart flows and then you should see the first one come up here, funnel builder by cart flows. So just go and click on install now. And once that has finished installing, we're gonna go and hit activate on cart flows. So now over here, we will see cart flows. So like I said, cart flows is the plugin that allows us to create multiple different one product funnels within the same website. So from here, we can go and click on flows over here and you will see we don't have any flows yet. So basically a flow 
is a flow of pages. So we've got the product page and then we've got the checkout page and then we've got the thank you page. So that's one complete flow. So we can go and add a new flow. So we're gonna start off by adding a new flow. And then after that, we're gonna go and import some products using Ali Dropship, which is a plugin that allows us to import products from AliExpress. And then we basically can go and connect those products to a particular flow. So we're gonna go and hit add new. And from here, you can go and add in different flows. So you can see that some of them will say pro. So you need to go and upgrade your version of cart flows to get the pro plugin, sorry, the pro template. So we're just going to go and use some of the free templates for now. So if we go and scroll down, let's have a look at some of the free templates that we can use. So what we're going to use, we're going to go and just go for this one over here. So we're just going to go for this evergreen product one, because don't worry, what we can do is we can go and edit all of these flows so that they can be edited for any product. So we can go and sell any product. So just go and hit install and wait for that to activate. So it is activating another plugin now called WooCommerce. And WooCommerce is the plugin that allows you to add e-commerce functionality to your WordPress website. So it allows you to for people to go and pay and buy something on your website. So once you have gone and hit activate, now you can actually go and see you can import the template. So let's go and import the template and it's going to say creating flow and it's importing importing three steps. So like I said, the product page, then the checkout page, and then the thank you page. So once it has been imported, now we can see that we have our landing page, our checkout page, and our thank you page. Now, as the title, you're going to name it the title of your product. So let's say, for example, we wanted to drop ship for this particular funnel or this particular one product page, we want to go and drop ship this product here. So this Wi-Fi booster. So what we can do is we can go and call this Wi-Fi booster. So that is going to be our flow. Our flow is going to be the Wi-Fi booster flow. And within that flow, we're going to have the landing page for the Wi-Fi booster, the checkout page for the Wi-Fi booster, and the thank you page for the Wi-Fi booster. So once you've done that, just go and hit update. And now once you hit update, we can actually go and start building out the landing page. So let's go over to edit over here. And then once we click on edit, we're gonna go and change our landing page name. So we're gonna go and call this the Wi-Fi booster. So we don't have to call it landing page. We can just go and call it Wi-Fi booster. And then you're gonna copy this. And over here where it says permalink, you're gonna hit edit and you're gonna go and paste that in there and hit okay. So now we have our Wi-Fi booster page. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go and hit edit with Elementor. So if this comes up, that's fine. Just hit cancel. We just need to go and hit update over here. And now that we have updated it, once again, we can hit edit with Elementor. So now it's gonna go and open up the Elementor page builder. Now once Elementor loads, you will see that your page has loaded, your landing page. So you can see we've got it like this. So if you hit this little button here, this is going to show you what it actually looks like. So this is pretty cool. Now we are going to go and now create the page surrounding the product. So we're going to go and completely edit all of this and change it so that it is basically for our Wi-Fi booster product. So firstly, what we need to do, we need to go and download some images from our actual AliExpress listing. So you can see here, there's loads of different images here that we can use for our Wi-Fi booster. So this one, this one, a few of these different ones. Now, in order to go and download the images all at once, you can install a Chrome extension called AliSave. So just go over to Google and type in AliSave Chrome extension and just go and add that to your Chrome browser. And basically then when you hit this button over here, it can download all of these images for you. So you can see it's gonna go and download all of the images. Now you can also go and download the images from the description. So you can see I can go for description images or the main images. So these are the main images and then you have the variant images, which are these two. So I would recommend either just going for the description images or the main images. Have a look through and see which ones you want to use for your one product funnel page. So once you have done that, what we can do is we can head back over to our Elementor page builder. And from here, we can start building out the page. So let me just show you the one product funnel we will be building for this particular product. 
So you can see over here, this is how it looks. And it's a very similar layout to this one over here. So the layout is very similar. We're just going to be changing some of the information, the font, the colors and the images. And you can see these gray bits here are for different mobile responsiveness. So this one here is for a tablet. This one here is for a mobile. So I'll be showing you how to do that. But as I said, if we just go and open it up like this, you can see basically this is the type of funnel that we'll be building for this particular product. So it's a very similar layout to the one we already have here. Like I said, we just need to go and change some of the colors, the images, and some of the text and information and things like that. So what we'll do is we'll start off by adding, editing this bit over here. So what we can do is, I would personally just recommend get ri getting rid of this top bit over here. Now, personally, I don't think you need a logo for every single product that you're gonna be offering on your site so you can see over here this one i don't have a logo for it so like i said you can create a logo if you want to so you could go and put create a logo a wi-fi booster one just make sure it's something simple and nothing too outlandish but me personally i think we can just get rid of this now so let me just show you let's go back so with elementor you can just click x on anything and it actually just deletes the section so just delete that and we'll get rid of that now over here we've got this top bit as well we can just go and delete that as well so now we just have over here like this we have our main heading so firstly we're going to go and add it says add an engaging header a heading so from here you can just go and type in something related to your product so if we go and have a look over here we know that this is a wi-fi booster that helps you to to boost your wi-fi connection so you can see over here i've just said never lose internet connection again so you can go and say something like that now another thing to bear in mind is different fonts that you're going to use so they should be relevant to the niche that you're in. But personally, most of the cart flows, when you import them, the fonts look really nice anyway. So you can see here, the fonts look really good together. So we could just carry on with this font. So over here, I'm just gonna go and say, never lose internet connection. Again, exclamation mark. So that's our main headline. We're kind of instantly capturing the customer's attention by telling them exactly what the product does or what it's going to the pain point that's going to help solve so it's going to help solve the pain point of them never losing internet connection again now over here you can see i've gone and opted for the list of different benefits that it has so to go and create this is really easy so you can just go and add in a subheading over here so you can go and add a subheading in something like wi-fi boost if i can spell wi-fi boost is designed to improve your internet connection and then you're going to go and add in some information from the actual aliexpress listing so if we go and have a look we can go and see let's have a look it improves wireless connection access to the internet computers so let's actually have a look at how it actually does it perfect it perfect to extend your wi-fi network up to 300 transmissions support ws encryption a wi-fi repeater can extend the wi-fi's routers wi-fi signal for a longer distance so you could say something like this, something like by adding different connection points throughout your home or office. So you could say something like that and just make sure your spelling is correct. So you can go and do that. But like I said, I prefer to have just a list of different benefits that it actually offers. So what we can do is, if you go to this little grid button over here, that's where you can add new elements with Elementor. So if we just go over here and we go and type in icon, and you see we've got an icon list. So if we go and drag the icon list in here, so we can go and drag that in here, and that is how you can go and create an icon list. So you can see over here, this is how I've gone and created an icon list. So let's just go and copy this over here. So we're just gonna go and copy this. So let's just say this one over here. So what we can do is we can go come in here and we can just go and paste that in there. Now we can go and change the style. So I'll just go and show you how to change the style in a moment. Let's just go and copy all of this that I've written. So then we can come into the second one and you can go and paste that in there. And we've got this third one over here, easy plug and play setup. So like I said, you're just accentuating all of the different benefits and you're just kind of summarizing them. So now we can come back in here and compact design, barely noticeable. So once again, we can add in another one 
and we can add that in there. So now we've got all of our information. And like I said, you're gonna take this information from the AliExpress listing and you're just gonna kind of rewrite it so that it's not so, usually on AliExpress, they're just short and sharp sentences. But in here, you're gonna go and just try and write it so that it looks like a little bit more information that you're giving, but you're still not having to write loads and loads because we are gonna go and add some more information about the product as we go through. So from here, you're gonna go and obviously change the style. So if we have a look, I believe this is the Montserrat font. So we can come back in here and we can go into text and then we can go to typography. So in typography is where you can change the font family. So you can go to family and you can type in whatever font that you want to use. So we're using Montserrat. So we can just type that in. Then you can go and change the color. So we change the text color. So we change it to that. And now you can also go and change the icon. So if we go into icon, we can go and change the icon color. So I'm using a sort of yellowish sort of color. So you can see from my icons, I've got this yellowish sort of color. Now I do recommend that you install a Chrome extension called Color Picker Eyedropper. And basically if you see another funnel that you want to go and kind of replicate, you can go and get their colors and you can use them on your store. So if I just go and pick a color from the web page and I can go and pick this sort of yellowy color, goldy yellow. So let's just go and pick that and we can just copy this. So now in here, if I go to the list, sorry, if I go to the icon, I can go to color and I can go and paste that in there. So now I've got that color like that. Now also you can go and obviously change the icons. So if we go back to content, we can go into here and you can go and choose your icon. So I'm just gonna go and choose this check over here like that. So then you wanna make sure that all of your icons are the same. So you've just got consistency. So I'm gonna come in here and just type in check and pick that one again. And once again, just gonna do it for this one. So these sort of small details are what make your website look more professional. So then we just do the last one over here. And just type in check. Whoa. And just pick that again. So now we can go and pick that. Now another thing with it, with the styling of this is you can go and change the spacing. So this is done in pixels. So if I go and do 10 pixels, you can see it just adds some spacing and that just makes it look a lot nicer. You can do the alignment as well. So if you do it like that, obviously it looks a bit weird. Um, so I recommend just probably leaving the, the spacing as it is. Now you can also go and change the size. So let's say I want to change this to 20 or we could even go 25. So a bit bigger and you can also go and change the text size. So if we come into typography, we can see text size, we can change this to 25. Now I wouldn't recommend going that big. Maybe let's try 18 something like 18. So now I'm just gonna go and delete this bit over here. So let's just delete that. And you can see it's already starting to come together. So we can see we've got never lose connection again. And then we have our list of the different benefits that it offers. Now actually, if you noticed, I deleted a space over here earlier. So we're gonna go and add in a spacer back in here. So if we just go and drag it into there, so let's try that again. So sometimes Elementor can be a little bit fiddly, but just persevere with it. So there we go. So now we can go and add in, let's say 70 pixels of space. That just makes it look a lot cleaner. So it's not really near the top over here. So now what we can do is we can go and add in an image over here. Now the images that you downloaded from the AliExpress listing using AliSave, you can actually go and remove the background. So if we go over to remove.bg, so this is a website that allows you to remove backgrounds. And from here, we can go and upload an image. So let's go click on upload image. And then from here, we can go and upload the image. So you can see here's the Wi-Fi booster image that I've downloaded from AliExpress. So if I just go and hit open on this, and it's just gonna go and remove the background for us. So you can see it's removed the background. Now you can see it hasn't removed this little bit down here. So you can go and hit edit over here and then you can go and hit erase and you can just use the eraser to just get rid of this. So just get rid of this completely. So there you go. So now we just have one with, so it's just completely clean and it doesn't have a background in. Now, what you can do is once you download this, then you can always just go within. So I'm using Windows, within Windows, when you actually go to edit an image just within Windows, you can actually go and flip an image. So if you wanna flip it the other way, which is what I've done for this, 
just so it matches with where you're putting it on your website because if I leave it that way it's just going to look a little bit weird so you can do that but it's totally up to you so now that you have done that once you have downloaded it so like I said you just hit download then you've got the image of your Aliexpress product and from here we can go and add it over here so if I go and click on this then I can go and click on choose image. So I can go and hit upload and click on select. And then from here, I can go and choose my Wi-Fi booster. You can see the PNG file without the background. So let's just go and hit open over here. And then I can go and just paste the alt text in. So it, this doesn't really matter. This is mostly for SEO purposes, but with this type of store, you're never really going to build up much SEO because there's so many different random products on it. So like I said, you probably don't really need to do that. That's just me being a perfectionist. So let's just go and hit insert there. And now we can see we have our Wi-Fi booster. So you can go and change the size of this if you want to as well. So if we just go, we can go and change it to small like that. Obviously, I recommend just leaving it this size that it is. So that's looking pretty good. Now, what I would recommend as well is to go and add a background in. So you can see for this one over here, we've got a background of this guy sort of typing with his Wi-Fi booster is helping him to do his work on his laptop. So what we can do is we can go over to a website called Unsplash. So if you go to Unsplash, this is copyright free images. And we can just go, so let's from here, Let's just go and type in something like laptop. So let's go and type in laptop. And we can see if we can find an image of a guy using his laptop. So let's have a look. So you can see here's a very similar sort of image that we could potentially use. So you can just go and download this now. And you can see it downloads. And now we can go and add this to the background of our one page funnel. So if we go and click over here, edit section. And then if we go into style, so go into style. And from here, you will see image. So go and choose image, go to upload files, go to select. And then from here, navigate to the image you just downloaded from Unsplash. So you can see here is my one over here. We can just go and hit open. And these images are quite big, so it might just take a little longer to actually upload because they're quite large. So once that's done, you can just go and hit insert media. So now you will see that obviously we have it's coming up with it's really large so what we can do is we can change the size so if we go over to size over here and we hit contain now we can see that it's contained with inside so you can also go for cover if you want to but i would recommend going for contain that basically just means that it stretches the image across this so actually let's actually let's try cover i believe cover is the better one Yes, cover. So you want to go for cover because if you go for contain, like I said, it, it contains it, but it can sometimes repeat it. And then from here, you can go and change where you actually want it. So if you go to position, you can go for top center. You can go for, let's say, bottom center. So with these large Im images, sometimes it doesn't really make a difference. So we're just going to go for, let's just go for top center. Now, as you can see, now it's kind of, we, we can't really read the text. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add an overlay. So you can just delete this color over here. So just hit clear. And from here, you can go to background overlay and we can go and choose a color. So go choose a color and I'd like to use usually just to use click black. So when you click that, sometimes it might not come up straight away. So just go and then just bring this down and let's try and then just click away. So let's try that again. So like I said, it can be a little bit fiddly at times. So let's try another color, let's try green. So for green, it's working. So for black, let's choose black again. And then down here, you've got opacity. So let's just bring the opacity up. And instead of having color dodge, which you're gonna have normal. Ah, so there we go now, so that looks a lot better. So let's go and change this to 0.5. So now you can see we can read our text a lot easier. So you can go and test out the type of colors that you want to use. So I'm just going to go and leave it as black for now. And I'm just going to go and put this opacity up to 0.6 just to make it a little bit darker. So you can see over here. Now you might see these white streaks coming across here. That's because we have an image overlay as well over here, which comes default with the template. So you can always just go and delete this if you want to. So now you can see that white is not going across the screen. I actually think that looks better, to be honest with you. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is have a look at changing this button over here. So as you can see, 
we have this sort of greenish color over here. So if I use my color picker again, let's go to the color picker and let's try and choose this sort of greeny color. And I'm gonna go and use this for my buttons. So I'm gonna go and copy this. And as you can see from here, I've done this over here. So let's go back over here and we're gonna go to the button here. And from here, we're gonna go to style and we're gonna go and choose this green color. So now you can see it's like that. Now for the hover, let's go back to the hover. We can choose our green color and then you can just drag it down a bit to make it a little bit darker. So you can see when we hover, it goes a bit darker. So maybe not that dark, maybe something like this. So just a subtle darkness. Now from here, what we can do is we can go and add in some text. So in terms of the text, you're going to want to go and add something in that is related to your product once again. So you can see over here, I've just said connect faster, buy now and save. So that's related to my product, connect faster, connect to the internet faster. So what we can do is we can say connect faster. And then once again, you'd say buy now and save. So the buy now and save basically just is kind of increasing the scarcity of the product and you're basically just saying we're offering a discount now so as you can see over here i've just added in some little information saying receive up to 50 percent off your order when you purchase today so i'm just going to go and copy this and this is really easy to add once again so what you can do is you can come over here and you can go to text editor and if you just drag that in there and now we've got the text editor and we can just go and paste in my text receive up to 50% off your order when you purchase today. Now you can go and add that in for every single product that you go and test within your store. So if we just go over to style, then we can go and change the color once again. So you can change the color. And then if we go to typography, we can go and change that to the Montserrat font that we're using. So let's go to Montserrat and just change it to that. And then obviously you're gonna to want to keep your consistency. So I can't remember the size that I chose for this, was it 18? So we're gonna make this 18 as well. So we'll come in here and we'll make this 18 like that. So now you can see we've got that. Now, if you wanna add, you can always add extra things to your buttons. So if we come over to the button over here, we can always go and add in some icons and things like that. So if we come over to here, let's go back to content, sorry. Then we've got icon. So you can go and choose an icon. So I like to go for an arrow, so we can go for an arrow and hit insert. Now we can see we've just got that little arrow over there, so that looks pretty cool. So now, as you can see, just within a matter of minutes, our one product funnel is starting to come together. So you can see we've got the landing page, the kind of header of the landing page straight away. So what I would recommend as well is probably delete this bit over here. You don't wanna be using Forbes and Harvard and those types of logos on your store, because you could get sued. So we can just go and like I said, you just click X and that gets rid of it. So now next up, you can go and do features if you want to. So these features are just gonna be different features of the product. So you can go and add these in if you want to. Now, if we go and have a look at mine, I've just gone, so let's just scroll past and let's scroll all the way down. I've just gone and added this bit here. There is a limited availability and this 50% off regular price may be taken down at any moment. So once again, just trying to add some scarcity. So what we can do is, and then after that, let me just show you, we've got this no hassle returns quality guarantee. So I have just gone and added that bit in and just sort of edited the template and I've just got rid of this features area here. So you can just go and get rid of that if you want to. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're just gonna go and get rid of this but like I said, you don't have to. It's totally up to you what type of product that you're offering. If you wanna go and add in the features like this, it's totally up to you. So let's just go and get rid of this. So now, if we want to go and add in another section, we hit the plus button. Then we hit the plus button here, and we can go and add in a single section. So that's a single section over here. And then within that single section, we can go and add in some text. So let's go and add in some text in there. So let's just drag that in there. So there we go. So now I can go and paste that text in here and we can go to style and we can go to center. So we're gonna center that text. Now, once again, you can change the text color. So we'll do that in a second. Let's go and change the background first. So we're gonna change this background to black. So if we click on edit section over here, we can go to style 
and then we can go to background type we can go to classic and then we can pick a color and we can just choose black like that so now if we click back onto our text and we can go to text color we can go and choose white so you can see how easy it is to build these types of things using elementor so now we can go to typography once again we can just go and type in Montserrat. So let's just type that in. Let's try again. If it's going to come up. If I type it properly, then it might come up. Right, let's try it one last time. So here we go, Montserrat. And we can go and change it like that. And I think we're going to go and change the weight of this one. Let's make this like sort of boldish. Let's make it like 900. Maybe that's a little bit too bold. Let's try 700. So that looks good. And then we can change the size to like 20 something like that so now you can see we've got it like that so next up we're going to go and add in the icons so as you can see we have these three icons over here so we're going to go and add those icons in so what we can do is we can add we can click on the plus button again and we can click on plus and now we're going to choose a three section because we're going to have the three icon boxes so go and choose the three section and from here we're going to go and click on the little grid and from here, we're going to go and type in. So go to search widget, type in icon. And we're going to go and choose an icon box. So go choose an icon box and just put it into there. And from here, we can go and edit this icon box. So you're going to want to just go and say this probably for most of the products that you promote, you can go and add in the same icons for all of the products and just make sure you change the colors because you're going to be promoting the same type of thing. So for, for there, you can see we've got no hassle returns, easy to set up and we've got the 30 day money back guarantee. Now you don't have to offer a 30 day money back guarantee, but personally, I think it does kind of help to increase your sales. So we're just going to go and paste that into the header and then you can go and change your icon again for the icon box so i've just gone and put a van maybe it's a truck let's try truck yet yeah. so i've just put truck in and then we can go and change the colors so you can see i've got my eyedropper over here i can go and pick the gold color and we can go to style and i can go to primary color and just paste that in there so now we've got that now i've also got the green over here as my heading so if we go to content and we've got over here we've got title so we can go and change the title type of typography to green so let's go and choose that bright green color we can go and paste that in there and then we're going to go and obviously change the font so let's go and change the font to Montserrat once again like that and then the main font we can just leave it as black but we're going to go and change it now make sure that you go and do this for everything don't leave anything looking random random fonts because you're never going to be able to make sales by doing that it's always just going to look a little bit fishy to people so as you can see that's coming along well now what we can also do is if we go to icon over here so let's go back to content we're going to go for icon position so we can go for icon position like that so it's sort of to the side so that looks a little bit better and then once again you can always i do recommend using spaces quite frequently because they just make your site look a little bit nicer so if we just go and add in a spacer in here when there's things all bunched up together they always end up just looking just not great so obviously that's a little bit too much space so we're just going to go for something like 10 pixels like that so let's have a look at how that looks yeah that looks much better now you don't always have to use the spaces as well so if we just get rid of this you can also go and add some padding around stuff so if i go to edit column and i go to advanced i can go and add 10 pixels of padding around that entire column so now let's try that again let's go for let's maybe try 20 or 30 so that's 30 pixels of padding so you can see that looks much nicer so now we've done that if you actually just right click on this and we can just go and hit duplicate and then right click and we can hit duplicate again and then we can get rid of these two columns over here so we can delete that one and this one as well we can right click and delete so now we have our three different icons 
and we can just go and change them accordingly. So that just means that we don't have to spend time changing all of the colors and the fonts again. So we can just go and duplicate them. So over here, we can see I've got no hassle returns. So we can just copy this and I'm just gonna go and put this into here. So we've just got a check once again and we just go and put no hassle returns and I've just typed that in here no hassle returns and then for the last bits we just have fast and easy setup so this is obviously re relating to this particular product so if you're selling another product then you can go and put something else in here that's relating to the product as well so let's just have a look at the icon I've used here that's a box so we can go for box let's try and let's just say that one over there and we can just paste this in here and then I can just go and say what did I say fast and easy setup fast and not pound sign and easy setup so there we go so you can see how it's starting to come together looking pretty good so far and like I said if you want to you can go and add in a logo over here so you could have this Wi-Fi booster logo over here but just make sure that it's a really high quality logo because you don't want to add in something that's going to bring down the quality of your page so for your product page so next up if we scroll down we can see now I've just gone and put in some information again. So this is just gonna be a particular header. Now, one thing to remember about this is you always want to go and contrast your sites. So what I mean by that is if I just go and open this out is if you have a dark color here, then you wanna have a light color here. Then you wanna have a dark color or a darkish color. So you can see I'm using a sort of gray and then it's a darker color and then it's back to a light color and then it's back to a dark color. So you always want to go and do that contrast. Don't ever have areas where it's just white and then white and then white and then white or if it's just gonna be dark, 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 dark. You always wanna have a contrast between dark and light, dark and light. And that just kind of breaks up the information. It makes it a lot easier on the eye for the actual customer as well and for the person using it. And it just makes your website look more professional in general. So now you can see for the next part, we've just got the simplest way to cover all of the Wi-Fi dead spots in your home. And most of this information I got just from looking from the AliExpress product page. So if we scroll down, a Wi-Fi repeater, a Wi-Fi repeater provides you max speed. So you can go and type in things like that. So I've just gone and had a look at this and basically just rewritten it in a way that's a lot better. So if we come back over here, we can go and just copy this. So this is gonna be a header and then I'll copy that bit after. So what you can do is now we can go and hit the plus button again. And from here, we're gonna go and just click plus once and just add one. And now we're just gonna go and we're gonna add in a header, a heading. So let's go and add in a heading. And we're gonna paste that in there. Now I just wanna quickly show you something as well. So I just wanna show you how you can go and set default fonts. So we don't have to keep going in manually into style and changing them every single time because that can become a little bit tiresome. So to set default fonts, if you click on the three bars over here and you will see default fonts, and then you will see you can enable it from the Elementor page settings. So click on Elementor page settings over here, and then where it's got disable default fonts, just uncheck this and hit save changes. So now that we have done that, we can just go and refresh the Elementor page builder. And now if we scroll down and we click back over here and then we click on our three dots, we can go to default fonts and then we've got primary headline. So we can go and change our primary headline. So We can go and change this to let's say Montserrat and then we've got our secondary one. So we can go and change that as well to whatever fonts that you want to use. So we can go and change that and you can change the body text as well. So you can go and change it once again to whatever font that you want to use. So we can go and change that. And also you have accent text. So we'll just change that one as well. We'll just make sure that they're all done. And then like I said, that just saves you the time of having to go and change the fonts every single time. So now you can see we've got our font has changed like that. So now, because we've got the simplest way to cover all the Wi-Fi in the dead spots, we can go and change the alignment like that. And now I wanna go and copy this bottom bit over here. So let's go and copy that and 
we can just go and head back over here. So I'm just gonna go and close this one so I don't get confused. Let's head back over here. So now we're gonna go and add in some normal text. So just go and add in a text editor and we can just go and do that. And we go to style and we just change it to the center. So now you can see we've got the simplest way to cover all of the dead spots. And once again, like I said, you're going to want to use some spaces. So let's add a spacer in the top. So let's see if we can just get it into the top. There we go. So we can add a spacer in like that. So that looks a lot nicer. And then you can see over here, we've just got this. So this over here is called a divider. So you can go and add in a divider as well. So let's go and add a divider in. Now you can always go and muck around. So you can see I've on the other one, I've got it all aligned to the right like this, which actually does look pretty nice. So let's just go and add a divider in now. So we've got a divider over here. We can add that divider in there. And then you can just go and change how you want it to look. So what we can do is we can make the width, let's say 20. So you could go for 20 or even shorter than that. We can go for 15 and we can just do the alignment like that. And then you can go and change how you want to do it. So you can go and change it to dotted or whatever you want, but we're just going to go and leave it as solid. And I'm just going to go and change the color to the green color. So like I said, just little things, little touches like that, just make your site look a little bit nicer. So we can go and do that. And then you can go and change the weight. So let's say two, three pixels, maybe something like that. So let's have a look at three pixels. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. So now that we have done that, we can go and add in the next section. So what I would recommend is if you've added in an image at the top, so if your image over here is on the right, then the next image you have is gonna be on the left. So it's the same with the colors I mentioned earlier. where you want there to be a contrast. So you want there to be a contrast of colors and you also want there to be a contrast of where you lay things out. So like I said, if you've got your image over here, the next image we have is gonna be on this side and vice versa. So if you've got your image over here, then when you scroll down, the next image will be over this side. So we're gonna go and add in a section. So not click that, we're gonna go and click plus, plus and add in a double section. And I'm gonna go and add in an image over here. So. We're gonna go and just drag an image over here. So let's grab image and just drag that in there. And now we're gonna go and choose an image, upload a file, select an image. And then from here, I'm just gonna go and choose this one. And then we're just gonna go and hit insert media. And let's just go and have a look at that. So now we have that image over there. And what you can actually do, I'm just gonna go and change this over here. So if you click on edit section, you can always go and change it to a full width section. So now you can see that it stretches it and makes it a little bit bigger. So I think that looks a little bit nicer. And then for this, we can always just go and add some padding around it. So maybe just sort of five, maybe 10 pixels sort of around, just so it's not so close to the edge. So now we've got it like that. And then let's go and scroll down and we can see I've just gone for some normal text. So this is just normal text with bolded headings. So let's just go and copy this. And we're just gonna go and add in a text editor over here, like this. And then we'll just go and paste that in. So now you can see, you just have to go and bold these up. So you can just highlight them and you can hit bold. And that just bolds them up. And now for this, I'm gonna go and add in some margin. So we're gonna go and click on this. If you go to advanced, so this over here, where it says link values together, that basically just means, so if I hit five, it puts a five in the top, right, left, and bottom, so a five all around. So if we delete that, we don't want to link the values together. We just wanna go and add some space at the top. We can just unlink the values. So we just click it when it's, so when it's not gray, and then we can go and add in, let's say 80 pixels. Let's try 80. So let's try that again. 80 pixels. So let's go and see what that looks like. So that looks pretty cool. So we can see the text is stretched out just a little bit. So what I would wanna do is, I'm gonna go and add some to the right as well. So maybe 50 pixels to the right as well. So maybe even more actually, and to the left. So I'm gonna go 50 pixels right, 50 pixels left. So now you can see it kind of makes it just look a little bit nicer. I am gonna add in a bit more on the right. I'm gonna go 80 pixels on the right. 
so it's like that so that looks pretty cool and then you can always go so you can see I've just made this bit here like a light sort of gray so if we just go and choose that color so let's pick a color from a web page and we just go and choose that so this should be called smoke yeah white smoke which is just a nice sort of subtle gray color then you can go and click on edit column so just this particular column over here you can go to style then we can go to background type classic color and just add that in there like that so that looks pretty nice so now what we can do is let's just have a look at how it looks so that looks pretty good not too bad what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to still go and add some more padding around it so I think I'm going to go and add in some more padding on the left and some more padding on the right so it's a little bit of trial and error when you kind of do these things because I can see like there's a big bit of space over here that I don't really like so I'm going to go and add in some more padding so if we just go let's have a look at how this one looks so that's not too bad but like I said I prefer it when there's a bit more padding so we can just go and add just a little bit more so maybe this needs a little bit more at the top so the top we're going to go and add in 100 pixels of padding so there you can see that looks much nicer so now that we've done that the next section you can go and have your testimonials now I wouldn't call this testimonials I'd call it reviews so you can see over here I've got customer reviews like this just with the stars and what people have actually said about the product and you can get the reviews just from the Aliexpress review so it doesn't necessarily mean that you're lying about the product you can just go and get copy from what people have said on here and then you can go and add that to your reviews so let's just go so we can see we've got this section here that I've added in as well so you can always go and add in another section so I think I'm just going to do that and like I said that just breaks up the colors a little bit again so what I would do is let's go and click plus and plus again and now we're just going to go and add in this sort of darker section again so this is sort of darkish gray so we're going to go and copy this and before we copy that let's go and copy the heading so as a matter of fact one thing that you can actually do because we've already got this section here which is going to be very similar to the section we're creating here if we just delete this what we can do is we can just right click on this hit copy then where we've got the plus if you right click you can hit paste and now if we scroll down we can see it's pasted just underneath so that's fine we can just drag it so you just grab it so I'll just show you that again and we just drop it there so you just grab it from here and then you can always just move it around wherever you want to so now that we've got that we're just gonna go and change the text so just go and change this to this and like I said you, you just go and do some research in terms of creating all of this text it's all just based off of the stuff that I've looked at on the Aliexpress listing and I've just rewritten it so now we can do that and I'm gonna just go and grab this and just drag this into the middle this time like that so that looks pretty cool and now we can go and change the background color of this to this gray color so if we go to style over here and then we just go to background color and we just paste that color in there so there we go so that looks pretty cool so now that we've done that now we can make this section just with a white background so I'm going to just show you how to create this section kind of from scratch anyway because that's what I've done with this one so you can see over here I've just created this sort of from scratch so if we just come back over to here now we're going to go and we can keep this one this top bit we're going to delete this section here so let's delete that one and then we're going to change this we're going to hit edit section I'm going to change it to a white background because like I said we want to keep the contrast so we're going to change it to white and then instead of testimonials we're going to have reviews and then you can go and put something in like see what our customers have to say and I'm going to make the font a little bit smaller because I want it to all be on one line like that so that looks much nicer and then we can go and opt for our green color so let's just have a look at how this is going to look if it looks a little bit leery we might get rid of it oh, that looks pretty cool and let's go to style and we can change that to that so now we've got to see what our customers have to say 
So you can see it's coming together. So let's just open this up. And from here, we can just go and we can add in another section. So let's just click on this because I think this has got some padding around it. So if we click on this, we can go and go to advanced and we can see at the bottom it's got 85 padding. Now I'm just going to get rid of that because we want our reviews to be pretty close. So now we've got that, we can hit the plus button, we can hit the plus button and we can go for the three section like this. Now if we come back over here, we can see I've got this three section. So you can see I am just using a star rating and this is a testimonial. So basically if we just come back over here, what we can do is we can just go and type in testimonial. So you'll see a testimonial and we can just drag that into here. So now we've got our testimonial and then we can also go and add in a star rating. So just type in star and we'll just go and drag that in like that. So now we've got our star rating and we can go and change the color of our stars to match the colors that we've been using throughout. You can just leave them yellow if you want to, but I like to have them all matching. So let's go and paste that in there like that. And then basically, like I said, what you can do is you can just go and you can copy and paste some reviews from here. So let's just say, for example, this one, that looks like a pretty good review. Obviously make sure you read it first. So let's go and have a look. Maybe that's a little bit too long. As a matter of fact, that's probably a little bit too long. So I want to go for something short and sweet, but also kind of talks about the product as well. So for example, this one quickly sent, quickly arrived, all the way tracked, customized, working. That's a little bit short, too short. It doesn't really give you any information about the actual product itself, but this one is perhaps a little bit too long. So maybe we could just cut this one down. So let's have a look. Delivery 24 days via WS did not connect in the network connection prescribed, but when entering the password gives an error, just made reset with the reset button and repeat over. So <laughs> this one here, like I said, make sure you read them because that doesn't really sound like a glowing review of the product, even though he's given five stars. It doesn't really sound like he actually thought the product was any good. So let's see if there's anyone here. The description corresponds packed very well. Normal <laughs> BS. Uh, so let's have a look. The package arrived without damage. Good device. Quality signal is powerful and easy to set up. Let's go for this one. That one sounds, see, that's kind of the perfect one that we're sort of looking to, looking for. It's not too long. It does give a little bit of information about the product where it says quality signal and is powerful and it's easy to set up and they recommend the seller. So let's say, what we can say is, I recommend the Wi-Fi boost. So we're just naming the actual product. So we can go and do that. So that's that. And then you can go and put a name in if you want to. So you can go and have a look at, they don't think they have names on AliExpress, but we can just go and put in, for example, you've got John Doe and you can go and choose an image. So we can see over here, I've already got some preset images, but you can always go and get some images from Unsplash for this. So if I just type in man, you can go and use one of these. For example, you could just go and download any of these and use them as part of your testimonials or sorry as part of your reviews now let me just have a look because I think let me just scroll down if we just do it like that me personally I think that that just looks a bit cleaner than when it's in the center like this and then you can go and you can either put an area in here so let's say you're selling to the US you could say Michigan something like that or you can just leave it blank so you can just go and do that and also you don't have to have an image so you can just delete it completely. You don't have to have an image if you don't want to. If you don't think putting images of people from Unsplash, then you can just go and have it blank like this. So now that you've done that, you can right click this and you can hit duplicate. And then you can obviously duplicate this as many times as you want. So you can have as many different ones in here as you like. And then, like I said, if you click on this, you can change it to a full width section. So that they're spread out a little bit more. And then what you can do is you can go and add some padding around the edges. So if we go and add, let's say 20 like that, maybe a little bit more even. So let's try, let's see what, maybe, you know, 50 is probably a little bit too much. 
let's try 35, not 350, let's just say 30. So if we have 30, you can see it's not so close to the edge. And then basically what you would do is, let's just go and delete this and delete this. And now we can duplicate it again. So let's duplicate and duplicate. And now you can see that there's just a bit of padding around the edges. Now, personally, I wouldn't recommend going probably more than five because then it starts to look a little bit messy. Or if you are gonna go more than five, so let's say you wanted to do six, seven, you can always go and you can just duplicate the entire section. So if you right click and duplicate, and now you can see that you can have more reviews underneath like that, it looks a lot cleaner. So that just looks a lot nicer. And as a matter of fact, I probably would still go and add some padding around the edge. So if we just go and right click on this and go to advanced, we can go and add some padding to the left and to the right. So let's go padding left, padding right around the entire section. So now you can see just gives a little bit more space around the edges. So that's a really easy way that you can go and add the reviews. So let's just go and I'm just going to go and copy in some quick reviews. So let's just go and say this one here, quality and QI am connected to the root without any problems. Watch the video on the internet based on the scene principle, blah, blah, blah. So let's just say, let's just go up to here. We're just going to copy this. Now, obviously, when creating these take a little bit more time, but just for the purpose of speeding up the tutorial a bit, I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in there. Make sure that the reviews that you're putting in are actually good and they're actually quality. Um, and she can just be Jane though, let's just call her. And then we'll just add in one more. Let's just say that one. That's fine. And we'll come over to here. And we'll just paste that in there. And then we'll just clear that up a little bit. So there we go. And this one can just be good old Bob Smith. Everybody loves Bob. So that's that one there. See what our customers have to say. And then what you're gonna do is you want to add some call to actions throughout your funnel. So basically what I mean by that is you want to prompt people to go and actually make the purchase. So we're going to go and copy this button. So copy this, I'm going to go and paste it in some key areas. So over here, we're going to go and paste the button in. So it's just down there like that. So now if we go like that, that obviously looks a little bit odd. So we're going to go and We'll just make it in the center like this. So now I can actually go and reduce this by a bit. So I can go and reduce that a little bit. So actually we're gonna go and drag that. Let's see if we can bring it up a little bit. So what we can do is when you click on the button, if you go to advanced and we can see we've got top margin, we can get rid of that top margin and we can actually go, sorry, top padding, and we can actually go minus 10. So as a matter of fact, we need to do that for margin. So if we go minus, let's say minus 20, you can see it brings it up a little bit. And now we've got it looking like that. So that looks a lot nicer. And what we will do is, let's go and make it back over here and let's just see how that looks. So that looks a little bit odd. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go and put it back in the center or we can just go and do it full length like that. So now I'm just gonna go and add some padding to this. Let's see if we can add some left padding. So let's go left and let's go 50, let's go 80. And now if we do that, see, now you can see that looks a lot better. So what we can do is we can go add padding to the left and maybe to the right, let's see how it looks if we add it to the right. And that looks a lot better. So now you can see we've added a call to action there. So when people are scrolling down, they're reading more information about the product, and that's just gonna go and prompt them to actually go and head over to the checkout and make the purchase. So now we've done that, what we can do is, we can copy this button again, and we can scroll down, and we can just go and paste it underneath the reviews. So now we've pasted it there, but what actually we want to do, we want to have it full width. So let's go and delete this. We're going to go and add a new section, click add, and it's going to be a single section. I'm just going to go and paste the button in there again. 
So now we can go and add that into the center like that. So that looks a lot nicer. So now once again, connect faster, buy now and save. So every time they're scrolling down, they're prompted to go to the checkout as they read more. Now finally, we can go and add in an FAQs section. So within the FAQ section, you're going to want to just address a few main things. So if we come over here, I don't think I've added an FAQs to this one, but you will want to have an FAQ section because it actually, it does help a lot to have one. So if we scroll down within the FAQs, what we can say is we can just get rid of this or we can just say, we don't really need to say frequently asked questions. You can just say FAQ, everybody knows what it stands for. So when we come into here, so this is called a toggle section. So if you don't have one, you can always go and add in a toggle section. So if we just go and type in toggle, you can see we've got toggle over here. So you can always go and add that in if you want to. So from here, we can go and edit this. So if we just click on this, you can see you've got all of the different toggles. Now, one of the main things that you're going to want to address is how long does, or just say how long is shipping? How long is shipping? So you're gonna to wanna to address this so let's say for this one over here, I believe it's got pretty fast shipping. So let's have a look if it was to deliver from the US or from the EU, let's see. Russian Federation, China, 20 to 40 days, EU. So maybe it doesn't. Oh, so if it ships from Spain, we can see it's gonna get here on the 23rd. Today is the 15th, so it's going to be around eight days sort of shipping. So that's pretty quick um, and obviously you've got to pay extra for that. So in here we can say shipping typically takes between and then you can say eight to you can just mark it up a little bit so you could say to 13 days or 14 days, let's just say. Now let's just go and change this style as well. So we're gonna come and change this. So we're gonna change the headings to our green color. So this title, we're gonna change to the green, like that. And also the typography for some reason has decided to change, but that's Okay, so let's go and change that to the Montserrat font that we're using. And I'm sure once we hit updates, it should actually just update. So we could just leave that for now. So you're gonna to want to, go, like I said, address how long is shipping and make sure once again, that you are spelling things correctly. So just go and make sure you're spelling it correctly. And then you can go and add in other things. So for this second bit, you can just say, is it safe to order online? Is always a big one. For some reason, I don't know why people ask that. I mean, they should just by default, if the website looks safe, you should know no website is ever gonna say it's not safe. But for some reason, a lot of people often, that's one frequently asked question that people think of. And then you can just go and say something like this. So you can rest assured that shopping with us is safe. We use the most up-to-date security systems and encryption software to keep your personal information safe. Actually, I'm just gonna go and change this. So I'm just gonna go and change this to delivery instead of shipping. So how long does delivery take, we can say. So that's a better one. And then we've got this one over here. So for this one, we're just gonna say, do you offer free returns? And I'm just gonna go and paste in some information that I always put in. So unfortunately, we do not offer free returns. Any returns would be at your own expense. So basically that just means you can get a refund, but you're gonna to have to pay for the shipping to refund the item back. And then finally, one frequently asked question that you're going to want to add is, what is your returns policy? with a question mark. And once again, here is some information that I've just added in. So you can see items must be returned within 14 days. They must be unworn or unwashed, depending on obviously the product that you are 
selling and then we've just got items must have all tags attached and then items must be returned to our return center so your return center if you're running your dropshipping store from home is obviously going to be your home address so you can just go and say please email us so let's just change that to us please email us at and then we've just got the professional email address for the return center if you just if you don't want to put your home address in plain view so now that we have done that we can actually just go and create this professional email address so i will show you how to create this later on in the tutorial so don't worry if you're thinking oh well you've put in that email address in there but you haven't shown us how to make it i will show you how to go and make this later on in the tutorial and then finally you can i would recommend so we haven't done a complete contrast here because we're going to go and the contrast is going to be at the very bottom so like i said i know i was saying make it sort of dark and then light dark and then light but that's okay because we're going to make this next part dark over here so now you can see we've got how long does delivery take is it safe to online do you offer free returns so those are the main ones mainly that people are going to be asking or looking at before they actually make a purchase and then finally all you have to do for this bottom part for your funnel is just go and copy the top section and you can just put it at the bottom section so if we just get rid of this one over here we can just go over here and we can just paste this bottom section in again and finally i'm just going to grab this bit over here and i'm just going to go and paste it over here so that is our first funnel so you can see that's our first funnel of this product that we're going to be promoting and now i'm going to go and show you how you can mobile optimize this funnel and then after we've done that we'll look at actually importing products so then we can go and create the checkout for this funnel and the thank you page then when we have done that we'll look at how we can go and create more funnels within the actual same website so it's basically you've got a general store you can promote loads of different products but in the one page format so now that we have done that let's go and have a look at how it actually looks on a mobile so don't be alarmed when you do this because some stuff is going to look a little bit funky when you do this so on a tablet let's go and have a look at how it looks on a tablet you can see on a tablet it looks all right but some of the spacing is out of whack a bit so you can see over here this looks a little bit too small and if we keep scrolling some of this is too close to the edge obviously this is you know way too long compared to the actual image over here so lots of stuff just looks a bit weird this button is just over to the side so we need to go and change the tablet and then on a mobile which is really crucial we can see over here it doesn't look terrible but a few things need to be changed so obviously you want to make that a little bit bigger ideally when we scroll these would probably look better if they were center aligned and once again this just looks just crazy like that so we're going to want to go and change some of this stuff and this is fairly easy to do with elementor so what we're going to do is firstly let's go back into desktop mode and from here we will start from the top and then we're going to work our way down so we're going to start with creating it for a tablet and then we'll start and move on to creating it for a mobile so let's start off by building the tablet version of the store so or of the page sorry so let's go to ta tablets over here so what we're going to do is basically if you want to go and change some things all you can do is duplicate sections and then just make them applicable for a tablet or for a desktop or for a mobile so let me show you what i mean so if i just go and right click on this section and i hit duplicate now what we can do is we can have this section which is just going to show on a desktop because it looks nice on the desktop and then we can go and edit this section over here for tablet so if you go and click at the top of the section edit section again so just go and click on this go to advanced go to responsive and then over here what we can do is we can go and hide on tablet and hide on mobile so now this one is just going to be for our desktop so now over here we can now go and edit this one so that it's just for the tablet so what we can do is before we go and edit it let's go and duplicate it one more time so we're going to duplicate this so now we've got our mobile version down here so let's leave our mobile version alone for a little bit and here we're just going to go and edit the tablet section so firstly i think we should go and delete that top bit over there so for a tablet it's going to have it without the top bit and then what we can actually do is let's go and see if we can go and make our image a little bit bigger on the actual tablet itself so in order to do this we might want to go and maybe just move some things around so what we're going to do is we actually can just go and maybe move this above here 
So we can move it above there like that. And then we can go and delete that section over there. And now from here, we can go and make this these columns 100% in width. So if we go and click on edit column over here, we'll see that it's 50. So we can change this from 50. We can change it to 100 like that. Then we can go and put this into the center. So now we can see, let's go and center all of this stuff up. Let's center this. And we can also go and center. So maybe we just leave that like that because when you center this up, it actually just changes all of the different icons. So it does make it look a little bit weird. So we'll leave that like that, but we can go and center some of this up. So let's center this one and we'll also center the button. Now, when it comes to buttons, you can make them full width like that. I think personally it looks nicer like this. So you can see that's how it's gonna look on a tablet. So that looks so much better. And now what we can do is, if we go over here, we can click on this, we can go to advanced, we'll go to responsive, and we're gonna go to hide on desktop, and then we're gonna go to hide on mobile. So that's how it's gonna look on a tablet. So now we can do that same section on a mobile now. So let's go and click on this section now, and we're gonna go into our mobile view. So we're going to mobile view, and now we can see this is how it looks on a mobile. Now, personally, that actually looks okay. Maybe we just wanna move just a few things around. So what we can do is this is our mobile one. So once again, if we click on this, we can go to advanced, we go to responsive, and now we're gonna to go to hide on tablet, hide on desktop. So this one's just for mobile. Now, the first thing I would do is delete the spacer once again. So we're just gonna go and delete that. Then we've got this in here. Now, what I would do is on for a mobile, I think I probably would go and put the heading at the top, then the image, and then we've got the different benefits. And then we can just go and make these in the center once again. So let's just go and center align this. And we can go and center align our button, even though it's already center aligned. What I would recommend is to go and just delete the icon. I personally think it looks better without the icon like that. So we can go and do that. Now this one should already be center aligned, yes it is. So now we can just go and have a look at how that looks on a mobile. So they can see we've got never lose internet connection again. Then you've got the picture of the product. And then after that, we've got this. And then finally, we've got limited time available. Now for this, we don't actually have to duplicate this entire section. For this, what we can do is we can just go and change the size of the font. So you can see it probably looks a little bit too big for a mobile. It looks kind of like it's being crammed in. So over here, if we click on style, we can go to typography and then you can see it's gonna have the mobile next to it. So for some stuff, you can just go, even though it's the same section, we haven't had to duplicate it. We can just go and change the font size for a mobile on its own. So we could go for 15, something like that. So I think that looks a little bit better. And then for a tablet, let's how, see how it looks on a tablet. For a tablet, I think it still looks pretty fine. So you can see over here, that looks a bit better. So now let's go back to tablet view and we'll just see how the next section looks. So on a tablet, this looks okay. So it's not too bad. Maybe we'd want to go and change just over here in the advanced. So if we come back, if we click on this edit section, we can go and have a look and maybe we can just go and change the padding. So let's go and have a look. It might be just the padding for this. So let's just go and stretch it out and see how it looks. So I think that's not too bad, to be honest with you, for a tablet. It actually looks okay. And then let's go and see how that section looks on a mobile. So icons on a mobile, they look perfectly fine on a mobile. So the next one we're gonna to wanna to do is this section over here. So we're gonna go back to tablet view. So you can see for this section, the tablet view, let's see how it looks. To be honest with you, I think once again, it looks all right. We might wanna just add around this section some margin. So let's go to advanced and we're just gonna go and add some padding on this. So we're just gonna go and add some right, let's just say, 30 on the right and 30 on the left. So on a tablet, you can see that just looks a little bit better than it being really clush, uh, flush and close to the edge. Now this section here, we're definitely going to want to change for tablet and for mobile. So let's just scroll back down. So this one here, once again, is gonna be one where we just duplicate it and redo it. So we're gonna right click, 
we're going to hit duplicate and then we will have our duplicated section down here so now we're going to go and click on this and once again like i said we can go into responsive so we just click on this go into responsive and we're going to go to hide on tablet hide on mobile so now that one's just going to be for the desktop so now if we scroll down we have this one here for the tablet so for this what we're going to do is once again we're just going to go and edit this so we're going to come into here and like i said let's right click and duplicate this so we have our one for mobile underneath and this one is just going to be for tablet so we're going to click on this we're going to go to advanced we're going to go to responsive and then we're going to go to hide on desktop hide on mobile and now this one's just going to be for tablet so if we click on this firstly we can go and try and change the padding so let's go like that so that looks a lot better and we could do the same for the button so let's go and change any padding around it so basically when you click on this link values together it resets the padding and the margin so if you're wondering why I just have to click this one button and it goes back to normal it basically just resets it back to zero so you can see it's zero now so now what we can do is we can add some padding to the top of this so let's go and add some padding at the top here some margin as a matter of fact we're going to add padding so basically the difference between padding and margin margin adds it around the outside and padding adds it around the inside so let's go and add let's say 150 and let's go and see how that's going to look so it's going to look something like that so you can see on a mobile sorry on a tablet that looks pretty decent that's that's not too bad so we're going to go and leave that as our tablet section and now we're just going to go and redo it for mobile so we're going to go and change this section over here we're going to go to advanced responsive hide on desktop hide on tablet and then we're going to go into mobile view so now we can come and it's brought us down to here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go and change the section. So if we just click on this, we go to advanced and we're just gonna go and like I said, just click that button. It resets all of this and we can click this. And once again, go to advanced and just click these two and it resets all of that. So now we can see for a mobile, the main thing we really need to do is just go and change this text. So that is all center aligned. Just like that there we go and that basically looks pretty good now once again on a mobile you could think about getting rid of the icon so let's just get rid of that and now let's go and have a look at the mobile version of our site so we can see it's coming along it's looking pretty good so we've got our icons and we have this area here then we've got that picture and now everything's looking nice so then this section here we could probably just leave so let's just have a look at how it looks on a tablet yeah it looks pretty good not too bad and then finally we have our reviews so reviews on a tablet look okay the only thing is the button over here so the button for some reason needs to be center aligned so it should even be center aligned on a desktop as well yep so that's fine and then on a mobile let's have a look at how our reviews look on a mobile so we can see all of these should realistically be center aligned on a mobile like that and the same with our stars so let's just go and see hopefully if we go into this view we could probably just go and do it on your desktop as well so th that just saves you time of having to go and duplicate the whole section again so if we just go and do it like this it still looks good on a mobile tablet and a desktop so now let's go back into the mobile view and we can see our reviews look like that so if we just go and do it this way now you can see that's our reviews and then we have this now once again you can go and delete the icon if you want to but just bear in mind if we delete this icon from here now then it's not going to show on the tablet or the desktop either. Well, that's fine. Well, not all the buttons have to be the same. So like I said, it's good to keep consistency with things. But as long as most things look pretty good and professional, it, they don't have to be everything have to be exactly the same. So now we also have our FAQs. So that looks good on a mobile. Let's have a look on the tablet. It looks good on a tablet. And then the final section at the very bottom is the same as our top section. So we can see all we need to do what we can do is if 
we just go to desktop, we can just go and if we just click on this one, we can just go to advanced, responsive, and we can just hide this on the tablet and the mobile. And once again, for this one, hide on the tablet and mobile. So let's go to responsive, hide on tablet and mobile. And now basically the sections that we created. So if we go into tablet mode, let's go into tablet mode. We can get our top section from our tablet mode. So let's go and grab our top section for our tablet. So that's this one. We can just copy this and then we can just scroll down and we can just paste this over here. So let's just go and paste this. So let's just hit paste and we've got that there and we can go and copy this section. So just copy this, scroll all the way down and we can just paste this here as well. So I know it is the same for the tablet, but for the mobile, we changed it a bit. So we don't want to have to change the bottom one as well. So now we can just put that in there and now we can just go and copy the mobile one as well. So if we scroll back to the top, let's go into mobile view. Let's scroll to the top and we can just go and copy this section, go all the way to the bottom and we can pretty much paste it where we want, but as long as it's after here, so let's just paste it here. And that's that bit done. So if we just open this up now, now let's go and have a look. So we can see for some reason, this bit is showing on all. So let's just go and delete this. And we're just gonna go and edit this. Let's just say we want it to be on all. We'll just go and change the font size like we did originally. So let's just go and change the font size for mobile. So I think we changed it to something like 15. Yep, that's fine. And now if we just go and check, so let's go and have a look at how it looks on a mobile. So we've got our top section with our button, our call to action. We have our icons, we have our information, then we have an image and we have some text, call to action. Then we have some more information, then our reviews, then our FAQs and then our bottom section, just the same as we do on a desktop and we do on a tablet as well. So it's that easy to go and make your website really nice and responsive and unique to each different device that the person is viewing it from. So that's really good. So let's just go back into desktop mode now. So that is basically it for your one page funnel. You can see how it's come together. So let's just go and have a look at how it looks on a desktop as well. So it looks really good on a desktop as well. So you can see very good one page funnel. So now that we have done that, what we're going to do next is we are going to go and start importing the products from AliExpress. So although we've got the product here, we actually want to import it so that when somebody purchases it, we can actually go and fulfill the order automatically. Because right now, if somebody was to go and purchase this, they, are, they cannot, we can't fulfill the order automatically because the product from AliExpress is not linked to our website. So now we're gonna go and install the Ali Dropship plugin. And once we've done that, then we can go and finish creating the checkout and thank you pages. So there will be a link in the description to Ali Dropship. And when you click on that link, you will be brought over to this page over here. Now, for those of you that don't know, Ali Dropship is a plugin that allows you to go and import products directly from AliExpress into your WooCommerce stores. And then it is connected to those products. So every time an order comes through, you can just click one button and it will automatically fulfill the order for you. And it can also go and get tracking codes for you automatically and send them out to your customers so it does a lot of good stuff and you're definitely going to want to use this to import the products and like I said if you don't use Ali dropship then you can go and fulfill orders but you're going to have to do it all manually so basically you take the customer's information you head over to AliExpress put it all in manually type it all in and then go and fulfill the order that way whereas with Ali dropship it's a lot easier because you just press one button it does it all for you so like I said just click the link in the description you will be brought over to this page over here and then from here you can go and click on buy plugin now from here you can go and click on buy now for $89 now like I said $89 this is just a one-off fee so you buy it once and you can use it on your store forever it's not 
per year you don't have to keep paying for this and if you're having a look around maybe go on google and see if you can find a coupon code or maybe they're running a promotion or something like that so you can get a discount but i think for 89 dollars it's a pretty decent price so once you've done that just go and order it and hit complete to the order and then after that you will be brought to a page where you can go and actually download your plugin and you will get a license key and this will also be emailed over to you as well so once you have downloaded the plugin and you've got access to your license key we're going to go and head back to our WordPress website and then we're going to go and install the plugin from here so just come over here and we're going to go exit to dashboard so go over to your WordPress dashboard and then from here we can go to plugins we can go and click on add new over here and then from here we can go and click on upload plugin and click choose file now from here navigate to where you downloaded the Ali dropship plugin so you can see I've got the Ali dropship plugin zip folder over here so just click on this and click on open and then just click on install now now one thing to remember that this is the Ali Dropship Woo plugin. So if you've downloaded the normal Ali Dropship plugin and you try and install it and it's not working, then make sure you've got the Ali Dropship Woo version. And the way that you can tell that is it should say Ali DS Woo next to it. So go and head back to Ali Dropship and download that version if you are trying to install the normal version and it's not working. So once we've done that, just go and click on activate plugin over here. And once you activate the plugin, you will now see Ali Dropship Woo come up within your WordPress panel over here. So we can just go and click on this over here and now we can go and click on license. And from here, we can go and activate our license key. So just paste your license key in here and click on activate. And then you should see, congratulations, your license key has now been activated so that is perfect so now we can actually start importing products from aliexpress into our wordpress website so let's go and head over to aliexpress and let's go and import this product over here so what we can do is next you need to go and install the ali dropship chrome extension so if i just go and head over to google and i just type in ali dropship chrome extension so just go and type that in and just go and choose the first one over here. And all you need to do is just go, so for me it's saying remove from Chrome because I already have it installed, but it should just say install. So just go and click on that. And once you have installed it, it should come up over here. So you've got the Ali Dropship Chrome extension. So now we're gonna go and head back over here. Now from here, it's gonna say you need to authorize your site. So we're going to connect Ali Dropship to AliExpress. So in order to do this, you're just gonna go and click on the Chrome extension over here. And from here, you're gonna go and see my domain. So we're just gonna go and paste in our domain name over here and then just click on add. Now it will be added. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna go and click on login and then it will bring us over to our WordPress website. So then just go and click on authorize. And then once you have done that, you will be brought back over to AliExpress over here. So from here, we can actually go and start importing products into the store. So let's just go and refresh AliExpress over here now. And now at the top, we will see we've got my WordPress. So we will go and change the name of our store later on. And then over here, we've got uncategorized because we haven't created any categories yet. So now we can actually just go and import this product into our WordPress website. So what you can do is you can go to edit over here. And this way we can go and edit a few things. Now, we don't actually need any description or anything like that because we're going to be running it through our funnel. So not through our product page. So we just need to go and connect the product to our funnel, which I'll show you how to do. So what we can do is we can remove the text, we can remove the images, we can remove the packaging details. We can also delete all of the images. So we can delete all of these images over here. We don't need any of them because we've already got the images within our funnel. And now we can go and apply the pricing formula. So we can go and do this. So what we can do is you can go and have a look at the actual price of the product. So if I just have a look, I can't see it from behind here. So let's just click X on this. So we can see it's $12. So let's just say we want to ship from Spain to the UK. It's going to be $12. Let's pick the white one and it's going to be, so it's going to be $20. So let's say we're going to mark it up to $40. Let's just say, so $39.99. So let's go back and click edit again. And from here, once again, we can just go and make sure we've deleted all of this stuff. So let's delete all of this. And now we can go and hit apply all variations. Sell price, we can just say, is the new price so that's 39.99 and we can say the original price was let's say it's 50 percent off so double of 39.99 that's 40 dollars that's 80 dollars so that's going to be 79.98 so that's 79.98 over here now also with 
this ships from and all of these attributes we don't actually need any of these so don't worry about these these are perfectly fine you can just leave these and we'll go and delete these later on and then all of the item specifics you can just tick and just delete all of those as well now finally over here you can go and just call this what you want so i'm just going to go and call the title wi-fi booster or just wi-fi boost now for this it doesn't really matter once again because they're just, they're just having a look at the name on what's on the actual page so on the actual funnel page so i've called it wi-fi boost so that's where they're going to see it so it doesn't really matter what you put in here but it is good just to keep it consistent so we can do that now you can add a category as well so if you want to have different categories for your general store so for each one product that you have you can add it to a different category so i'm going to go and add this to electronics and we'll just go and hit add so this is going to go under the electronics category so now that we have done that what we're going to do is we're going to click add to import list so that is going to go over to our import list so now if we head back over here what we can do is we can go to products under WooCommerce and go to all products and once you click on products you will be brought over to your import list so you will see that there is one product in the import list so that's the product that we just imported from Aliexpress now one key thing to remember that I want to show you now so if we just click on edit the key thing to remember is that because this is a variable product but with the free version of cart flows you can't have variable products so basically what that means is when somebody goes over to the checkout they can't pick different variations so they can't pick black or white or is it a U eu plug or is it a us plug with the free version of cart flows it can only be one variation of a product so it can only just be for example for this one we could only go and sell us white and that's it if you do want to offer variations then you need to upgrade to cart flows pro and that way you can go and offer these different variations and you can also go and offer packages so for example if they buy two or three they get a discount but with the free version of cart flows you can only offer one variation Variation. so what you're gonna have to do and this is very important you're gonna have to go into variations and you're gonna have to delete all of the variations that you that you don't plan on selling so if you just let's say I'm just gonna go and sell this US let's say US with original box white then I'm gonna delete everything else and all I'm gonna go and keep is gonna be the US with original box white so if we go and let's go and find one let's go to the next set of variations so over here, let's have a look. So we're also looking at ships from, so let's just say we wanna pick the ships from China one. So it ships from China, US original box, and it's the white one. So then that way, let's go here again. We're gonna go back over here. So all I'm gonna do is keep this one over here, China, US plug, white, and that's it. So then I'm gonna delete all of these other variations. So I'd come in here and delete them all like this. So that way we've still kept that variation. So when we go to fulfill the orders, it's still linked to the AliExpress supplier. So when we go to fulfill the orders, we can still do the one click fulfillment. So like I said, you're just gonna go and delete all of these. And that way, when someone makes a purchase through Cartflows, it isn't gonna get confused which variation they purchased. So I'm just gonna go in here now and delete all of these variations and then we'll come back and I'll show you what I mean. So I've just gone and deleted all of the other variations and I'm just left with my single variation left. So it ships from China, it's the US plug and it's the white version. So like I said, you're gonna want to do that because then when you go to fulfill orders, it will be linked to this product. So you can just go and do the one click fulfillment. So that's a really easy way to make sure that your product is still linked. And like I said, if you do want to upgrade to the Cartflows Pro plan it is $2.99 for the whole year. So I will leave a link in the description to that. And that way, then you can go and offer different variations at the checkout. So once you have done that, we're just gonna go and publish the product. So now that we have published the product, we can go and start designing our checkout page. So to in order to design our checkout page, we'll go to flows and we'll go over to flows. So cart flows into flows. We'll go into our Wi-Fi booster flow. And from here, we're gonna to go to the checkout page. So go and click edit on checkout. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that we rename our checkout because you're going to have a different checkout page for every product. So this one's gonna be called the Wi-Fi boost checkout page so then just copy this and paste it into here so now we've got our wi-fi boost checkout page now the first thing that we're going to do is assign a product so we've just gone and imported our product so over here where we've got products we can go and type in 
Wi-Fi boost. So maybe that's because I called it this. So there we go. So we can go for this bundle over here. Ships from China, bundle, US plug, and it's the white version. So we're gonna go and pick that, like that. And then next up, we can go for the checkout design. So we can go and change the colors. So the main color I was using was this sort of greeny color. So I'm just gonna go and copy this, and I can go and paste this as the primary color. Now we're gonna go and see how that looks because if it looks a bit weird and a bit leery, then we can always just go and change that. Then you can go and change the font as well. So let's go and just change this to the Montserrat font that I was using on the homepage. So let's type Montserrat and just choose that. And then we're just gonna go and hit update. So just don't worry about that, just hit update like that. That's perfectly fine. So now what we can do is we can go and hit edit with Elementor because it's going to go and bring us over to our checkout page that we can go and edit now. So from here, we can start building our checkout page. Now the checkout page is fairly easy to build because we really just need to focus on this area. We don't want too much on the checkout page because we don't want it to be overbearing for our customer. We want it to be seamless so they just click to the checkout and all they have to do is basically just enter in their details. So what I recommend doing is I recommend going and opening your funnel with Elementor as well because we're just going to go and copy a few things over. So firstly I'm just going to go and copy over the icon list over here. So we can just right click and copy and then we're going to head back to our checkout page. And over here, I'm just going to go and paste this in here. So I'm just going to go and delete this. And I'm going to delete this. And I'm just going to go and leave that in there. Next up, I'm going to go and just copy this. Never lose connection again. And I'm just going to go and paste it in here. So where it says your awesome product. So let's just go and actually copy the actual text. Never lose connection again. And I'm just going to go and paste that over here. And then we can just go and delete this bit here. Now, I believe this has got, let's just see what's happening here. It might have some margin and padding at the top. So it doesn't. So that's probably because this is not a heading. This is a, so there we go. So like I said, sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly. So this is an actual icon box. So what we can do is, I'm gonna go and paste this in as a heading. So as a matter of fact, let's delete this. And we will just, like my original plan, let's just copy this and we'll just paste it in here like that. And we can just drag it up here and then we can just delete this one. So now we've got that. And then over here for the image, we're obviously just gonna go and choose the image of our product. So just go and insert that in there. And then we can go and change this one here as well. So we can go and change the background just like we did. So we can go and do it of a guy with the laptop. So we'll go and choose that. And then we can go for cover. And then once again, we can go and change the background overlay. So let's go and change this to black like this and change the opacity to let's say 0.6. And I'm just gonna go and delete those white streaks again. So let's just see how that looks. So that looks pretty good, but we want to just go and change this so we can change the alignment. So let's go for that. That looks a lot better. So now you can see that's basically our checkout page. Now over here, I recommend just get rid of this, to be honest with you, make it as clean as possible. So we can just delete that. We can delete this section here. And then if you want to, you can go for the 30 day back guarantee. You can leave that bit in there and you can say 100% no risk money back guarantee. You're fully protected by a 100% money back guarantee. If you don't like our products over the next 30 days, then we'll gladly refund your money, no questions asked. And then just for that bit, you can just go and say, just as an extra, contact us at contact at domain.com. So you just go and put in your professional email address. So I'll go and show you how to create that now. So in order to create that, you just go over to site tools within SiteGround, and then you can just scroll down to where it says email. You can go to accounts, and then from here, you can just go and create an email address. So you can see here is the domain name. So you can just go and type in contact, choose a password, 
and then just go and click on create and it will go and create an email account for you so i'm just going to go and click on create over here and now you can see email account contact at the domain is created so then if we click on this you can actually go over to log into webmail and then it goes and takes you over to this webmail called roundcube and basically from here you can go and receive emails from this so so And from here, you can go and receive emails to your professional email address, and you can also go and send emails. So basically now, if anybody sends an email to this one, contact at contact domain, then your customers' emails will come over to this inbox over here, and you can go and reply to them. So this is basically our checkout page. We don't really need to do any more than that. So we just go and hit updates over here, and now we can go and view this to go and see how it actually looks. So you can see over here, this is basically it. And like I said, because there's no variations with the Cartflow's free version, we've just got the Wi-Fi boost times one with the price and they can just go and place the order. So you can see over here, just looks pretty clean, pretty cool. And that is it. So now that we have done that, the next thing that we will do is go and create our thank you page. So once they actually pay, they get taken over to a thank you page. So let's just go back to my WordPress over here. And from here, we're gonna go back to Cartflows. So let's go to Cartflows and we'll go to Flows again. And then from here, we're gonna go into our Wi-Fi booster. And now we've got the thank you page. So let's just go to edit the thank you page. And we're just once again gonna call this the Wi-Fi boost. Thank you page. So I'm just gonna go and change that to a capital B. And we're gonna copy this and we can paste this in here and click okay. And now basically we can go and change our font family of our thank you page. So let's just go and change it to Montserrat and the heading as well to Montserrat. So like I said, just keep consistent with everything. And then we can just go and hit update. And then from here, we can go and edit our thank you page. So let's go edit with Elementor. Now from here, we can just go and create a simple thank you page. It's really easy. So we can just say, we've got our thank you heading. So we can say, thank you for ordering. And then you can say the particular product. So the Wi-Fi boost. So we can go and do that. And then over here, we can say something like your order will be processed within three working days and should be with you. And then you can go and put the shipping times from AliExpress. So within, let's say 14 to 18 working days. And finally, you can just say you will receive your tracking details via email. So you can just go and do that. Now over here where it says order not found, that's just because we don't actually have an order, but their order will show up here. And then you can go and do this if you want to join our community and you've got a link to Facebook, Twitter. But if you don't want to, you can actually just go and delete that whole section. Just keep it simple. And then finally, like I said, you just wanna keep everything consistent. So with this green tick, you could go and change the color of this. So to the color that we've been using throughout. So if we go to style over here, we can just go and change it to that. And then we can just go and change the background once again. So if we go to style, we can go to image, we can choose that laptop background that we've been using. And then we can go and add a background overlay. So let's go and add a background overlay, just a black color like that. And then finally, we can just go and choose this as a cover and the position can be bottom center and that's basically it. So thank you for your order. Now you can see, you maybe wanna make that a little bit darker. So if we go back to the background overlay over here, we can change that to, let's say 0 0.75 or maybe 0 0.6, yeah, 0 0.6, that looks good. And that's it. So thank you for your for ordering the Wi-Fi boost. Your order will be processed within three working days and should be with you, should be with you within 14 to 18 working days, you will receive your tracking details via email. And that's basically it. And like I said, their order will show up here. So now I've shown you how to create the complete funnel. So a complete flow with a one product page, a checkout page, and a thank you page. What we actually do need to create 
for all of these pages is a footer just with our privacy policy our terms of service and our contact page so in order to do that firstly we're just going to go and create those pages so go and head back to the dashboard over here and from here we're going to go to pages and we're going to go to all pages and firstly just delete this privacy policy draft and delete this sample page so we're just going to go and trash these so we can go to bulk actions move to trash so we're going to go and trash those over here and now we're going to go and add a new privacy policy so let's just go and type in privacy policy in here so we're going to create a new privacy policy and what we're going to do is we're going to go where we've got templates we're going to go for elemental full width and over here we're going to disable the primary header and disable the primary footer and then just go and hit publish so i'll just show you why we're doing that so let's just go and hit edit with elementor now and now the elementor has loaded you can see there's no header there's no footer it's just a completely clean page because when we're promoting each different funnel we don't want to have a home page with a footer and with a header and a menu and all of those different things we're just having loads of different one page funnels and we're running ads to each funnel so we basically don't need to have a header or a logo or anything like that so for our privacy policy we can make it just completely clean so over here we can just go and add in a section just one single section and then in there we can go and add in a text editor so let's just add in a text editor in there and then you can just go and paste your privacy policy in there and we can just make it like this so this is basically just going to be our plain privacy policy now we will add a footer in here that links to a contact us and a terms of service as well and you can just go and make this look a little bit nicer so you can add in a spacer in there if you want to and then you can obviously go and change the font as well so let's go to typography and we're just going to go and change the font so that it still matches with the rest of all of our pages so we'll just go and do that and like i said that's just going to be our plain, plain privacy policy and we will just have a footer over here so we will create the footer in a moment now if you want to create a privacy policy you can just use a website called getterms.io so you can just go over here and you can go and create a free privacy policy so you can go and create a free one you just type in your website your name your company name email and then you just hit get terms and it will basically go and create terms like this for you that you can go and copy and paste in here so this is going to be our privacy policy so let's just go and hit update so once we create the privacy policy the terms of service and the contact us then we're going to go and just create a footer that we're going to go and add to all pages so once we've done that let's exit to the dashboard and now we can go to add a new page and once again we're going to go and call this one the terms of service so we're going to go and add a terms of service and the same again edit with elementor disable the primary menu disable the footer and hit publish so now that that has been published we can just go and edit that so let's just go and edit with elementor now from here once again we can just go and add in a text editor and we can just go and paste in our terms of service and we'll just make it centered like this and you can always just go and add in a spacer at the top here so once again it's just a plain terms of service page that's it there's nothing else to it so then we can just go and hit update and now finally we can go and create a contact us page because it's very important to have a contact us page or for your customers to at least see that you have one so that way they they're a bit more confident in buying something because they know if something goes wrong they can still contact you so in order to do this we're going to go to plugins so let's go to plugins and we're going to go and click on add new so we're going to go and add new and then over here we're going to go and type contact form 7 so just type in contact form 7 and then you'll see this first one that looks like a sort of volcano or mountain so just go and click on install now and then once it has installed we're going to go and hit activate so now we can go and activate that and now we should have contact down the side somewhere here so let's go we've got contact over here yep so go and click on contact forms and then you've got contact form 1 so we're just going to go and hit edit and basically this is our contact form so your name your email subject your message and they can just hit the send button so all we need to do is go to mail and the to mail so this is where it's going to go to can be the professional email address that we just created so contact at domain.com and then you can say from so you can just put the name of your store 
so your store can just be in here and then once again it's going to be from you can just put the same email address so you can just go and put that in there and then so you can see for me it's just saying it's not the right email address because this is not my domain so that's fine i can just leave it as that and then the subject can just be we can just say let's say customer inquiry that can be the subject and now basically every time somebody fills out the contact form and it comes over it is going to go to our professional email address that we created in SiteGround. So you can just go and log in and you'll see all of your customer emails in here. So now that we have done that, we can just go and hit save. And then we're going to copy this code over here. So you see this little code here, we're going to go and just copy this. So just control C that. Then we're going to go to pages, we're going to go to add new. And we're going to go and call this one contact us. And once again, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to go and make it Elementor full width. We're going to disable the primary and footer, so the header and the footer. And we can just go and hit publish. And now if we go to edit with Elementor, and then from here, what we are going to do is we're going to go and type in short code and drag the short code in here. And then we're going to go and paste that code that we just copied. And now you can see we have our contact us form. So now you can go and hit add in a heading at the top here. So you can say, contact us and just center align it and just make sure it's the same font. So once again, let's go and change it to the same font. So let me try that again. Let's type in Montserrat and there we go. And then you can also go and just say how long it's going to take to respond. So if we just go and add in over here, we will aim to get back to you in one to three working days. And then once again, we can just center align and add in our typography. So let's just go and add that in there. And now finally, you can just go and adding a spacer at the top, just like that. And now we just have our plain contact us page. So now what we need to do is we need to go and create a footer so that we can go and link to these pages from all of our funnels. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and head back to our funnel. So I'll just show you once again, you should hopefully know where to go and access it now, but we should, I'll just show you anyway. So go back to our WordPress dashboard and from here, we're going to go to flows. So let's go to flows. We're going to go to our Wi-Fi booster. We're going to go to view on our Wi-Fi booster, and then we're going to go and hit edit with Elementor, and we're going to go and link to all of those pages in our footer. So if we just scroll down to the bottom over here, what we can do is we can hit the plus button. We can go for a three section, so three like that. We're going to go and change the background color. So let's change the background color to just plain black. So we we'll just change it to black like this. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go and add in text into all of these. So this one's going to be contact us. And we can just go and center align it, we can make the text color white, and just make up the typography the same again. So let's go and change our typography. And then what we can do is you can just go and add a link. So if we basically come back to our WordPress dashboard, and we go to pages, all pages. And let's say our contact us page, we can go and grab this link here. So let's go and copy this. So make sure you just copy it like that. That's fine. And then from here, we can go and click the link button. So you'll just highlight your text, insert link, and we're just going to go and paste that link in there. So that's our contact us page. So just make sure there's no spaces or anything like that. And then we can just go and do that. So now you can see, the, so the link text is coming up blue. So I'll show you how to change that in a second. So what we can do is, now we can just go and duplicate this and just drag it in here. So this one's going to be our privacy policy. And then we can come back over here. We can go and grab our privacy policy link. So let's just click on this. We'll just copy this link here. Let's copy that. So we'll come back over here and we'll just edit this link and paste our privacy policy in. And then finally, we've got our terms of service. 
So duplicate and put this one as terms of service. So now we can go and do that. And what we can do is, once again, we can come back over here. We can go to terms of service. And then we're going to go and copy the link again to our terms of service and edit link and just paste our terms of service in there. So that is our footer. So let's just hit update. So now what we want to do is we want to go and add this to every single page. So what we can do is we can right click this and we can click save as template. So then we can go and enter the template name. So we can call it a footer and we can just go and hit save over here. And now we've got this template over here. And we can now apply this template to all of the pages that we have created so far. And then any new pages that we create and any more product funnels that we create in the future, we can continue to just apply this footer template. So let's just go and I'll show you quickly how we can go and change this to white. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to go and change the typography. I'm just going to make it a little bit bolder. So not size. Sorry, we want the weight. So let's go and make the weight sort of like 500 on all of these. So we're just going to go and change this one as well to 500 and this one as well. And then we're going to go and just change those link colors to white. So we'll just go and do that. So let's just go and hit update. And one other thing that we quickly can do is make sure that these links open in a new tab. So that way, if somebody is on this page over here, so they're on our one product page or on the checkout page and they do click over to the privacy policy or the contact us page then it opens in a new tab so it doesn't take them away from the page so in order to do that we can just go and link over this and then over here where we've got edit we can go to link options and we can go open link in a new tab and just hit update so make sure you go and do that for all of these so let's go and do that for this one edit link options open in a new tab hit update and also for this one over here as well, we can just go to link options, edit, link options, open in a new tab and hit update. And then let's just go and hit update again. So in order to change the link colors to white, just go and click on view page over here. Then we're gonna go and click on customize. And once you click on customize, we can just go and add some CSS. So this is just a bit of code that's gonna go and change these to white down the bottom here. So if we just paste this in, so what we need to do is A and then one of these little brackets and then color, colon, hashtag FFF, semicolon and end brackets. And then you can see we've just got that it's changed to white like that it looks a lot better. So now we can just go and hit publish over here. And then like I said, what you're gonna have to do is you are gonna have to just go and add that footer to all of your pages. So I'll just go and quickly show you what I mean. So if we just go back to our WordPress dashboard, we can go to our flows again. So where's flows? We can go over here, we can go to edit, and then we can go and edit, let's say our checkout page. And then we just go and click edit with Elementor. And now on our checkout page, if we scroll to the bottom, you will see this one over here, which says add template. So we can just go and add template, go to my templates over here, and then we can go and hit insert and just click yes. And then it's gonna go and insert our footer template into the page. So as you can see, it's just loading now. So let's scroll down to the bottom. And now we've got our footer over here. So that's just our custom footer. So you wanna, you're going to want to go and add that to your thank you page and also to these three pages as well. So go and add it to your privacy policy, your contact us page and your terms of service. So just go and add that one in there. And now what we can do is let's just go and view this page just to make sure that this is not coming up. So we don't want this coming up here. So if that does happen for you, we can go back to edit with Elementor. And firstly, what we need to do is just make sure that the page layout is the template for page builders. So let's just go and make sure that it is that. And now we can see that that header is gone again. So just make sure if that does happen to any of your pages where the header is coming up, then make sure that you just go and do that. So now we can see that it's coming up like this again. So that looks a lot better. So now we can just go and view the page again. Let's just make sure everything's looking good with this one. Yep, that's perfect. And like I said, now we have our footer down the bottom here. So now if we go to contact us, we've just got this plain contact us page. And like I said, once again, if we hit edit with Elementor, we're going to want to go and add that template in. So from here, we can just go and add in the template again. So if we go to my templates, we can just go and hit insert, click yes. 
and then from here we should see that our template has been inserted and then we can just go and hit update over here now if you want to change the color of this button over here you can go and do that as well so if i just go to view page over here and from here we can just go to customize and when you click on customize if you go to global and then you go to buttons and then from here you can go to color so you can go and change let's say the text color was white and then we can go and change the background color to black so let's just go and have a look and you can see that it just changes to that so we can just go and hit publish and we can just go and close this and that is basically it for our footer pages so now that we have done that next up let's have a look at creating another flow so we're going to go and add in another product from aliexpress so we're going to import another product and we're going to create another flow around that product so let's just go back to our wordpress dashboard now so we're going to go back to our wordpress dashboard and from here we're going to go to flows so cart flows go to flows and now we're going to go and hit add new so now we can just go and install that same template that we used before the evergreen product one but this time it's going to be a lot quicker to actually go and create the template so let's just go and import this so it's going to go and import those three steps and once that has finished importing we should see our flow come up so now we can go and add another flow so let's just say for example i wanted to go and create a flow around this product this ab wheeler product so what i can do is i can just go and call this let's say abomatic let's just say for example you might want to think of a better name than that but let's just go with that for now and we can just go and hit update over here and now we can go and create our landing page so we're going to go to edit over here on our abomatic page once again we're going to go and change the name and then we're going to go and change it over here as well and click ok and now we can go and click edit with elementor now once elementor loads we can go and build a second funnel for a completely different product now what i re recommend doing is opening up the first funnel that we created and we're just going to go and copy and paste some sections in and then we can just go and change them for the particular product so let's just go and basically in this new funnel we can literally just delete every single section so just go and delete it all and now we're just left with a blank canvas and we can start from scratch so we can just go and copy this section over here and we can go and paste it in here like this and now we're going to go and create this funnel based off of this ab wheel so from the beginning once again what you're going to want to do you're going to go and download the images so you can go and click on ali save and you can go and download the images in the description and then once again you can go over to remove.bg and remove some of the background images so let me just show you here is how it's going to look so we can see this is how the funnel will look and we can basically just go and copy all of the things from the first funnel and just change them around like i said so let's do it with the background first so we go to style we head into the background and choose an image so i'll go to upload files select a file and from here i'm just going to go and choose this background one over here so let's go and choose that and then we're just going to go and click on insert media so now we can see we've got that as the background now we can go and change the color so we've got the background overlay so let's just go and completely clear this and we can see it's kind of white like that so that actually looks pretty cool now we can go and add in an image so we can go and choose an image so let's go and choose a different image so let's go and choose let's see which one let's try this one here so you can see i've just downloaded these images from aliexpress and we can go and insert this in here now what i'm going to do is you can see for this one i've switched it around so i'm just going to go and switch these around so if you grab a column and you just move it to the other side it switches it around and now we can go and we can change the color so i can change the text color to black for this so let's try that again text color is going to be black let's see if that's going to work sometimes if it doesn't work you just have to move this slider along so there you go you can see it's working now so let's just go and leave that there and then i can go and change this now for me for this one i've just written some text instead of doing the icon list so i'm just going to go and copy this and i'm just going to go and put this let's delete this section and we'll just go and add in a text editor under here and we can go and paste that in there just like that so now you can see how it's coming along so we can go and change the style so i'm going to go and change this to roboto 
So try out different fonts because the fonts are going to basically going to be relevant to the different products. So you can go for more feminine fonts, you can go for more masculine fonts depending on the product you are promoting. So this one over here, I'm going to go and change this as well. So I'm going to go and change this to play, I believe it's called play, play fair display. That's the one. Let's change that to play fair display. And then as you can see, like we've done with this one, I used the color picker to pick this green color. Well, we can do the same for this one over here. So we can use our color picker over here and we can go and pick this yellowy sort of color. Let's go and choose that. And then we can just go and change our button colors. So let's go and change the button color for this one. So let me just copy that. Let's come in here and copy this. And we can go and change it. And then we can go and go to the hover bits. We can do the same thing and just make it a little bit darker. So when they hover and then maybe not that dark. Let's go maybe this way across to make it a bit darker. And then the text color, we're going to make it black for this. So like I said, with this, you can just use the slider. So let's go over here. We're going to change this text color to black as well. And there we go. So now you can see how it's coming along and like i said basically you're going to go and just change some of these sections so that they are the same as this first one you created but for the relevant product that you're trying to promote so we can go and do this as well so once again let me just move this over here and then we can go to typography and i can change this to Roboto. So let's just go and type in here Roboto and we can go and choose that font. Now obviously for the button we don't want to say connect faster because this is not anything to do with connecting to the internet or anything like that. So I can go and change this button and instead of saying connect faster I can say let's see what we said on this one. I just said order now and save. So you can go and just say something like that or you can say turn up buy now and save. So that's the first part. Then the second part, so if we scroll down, we've got this bit here, which says there's a limited time. So we can do the exact same thing again. We can just copy this and we can paste it in here. So you can see like that. And all you have to do then is just go and change the fonts. So you can just go and change the fonts so that it matches the fonts that you're gonna use for this particular product. So we can go and do that, change it to Roboto just like that. Now, if we just scroll down on this one, you can see I've added a video in here of the product. So see Admatic in action. So you can go and add a video in. So I'll just show you how to do that. So what you can do is if we go and add a title in, so we can add a heading in here and we can just say, see in action, see Admatic in action. And you can go and obviously change the styling of this. So if we go and change the styling to Playfair display, Playfair, and you can make it a bit bigger. So we could make this, let's try 35. And then you can go and add in a spacer in here. So let's add a spacer in there. And then, like I said, finally, what we can do is we can just go and type in a video. So you're gonna choose this W video, the WordPress video, and just going to put it in there and then it's going to say add video so click add video select a file and then i can go and add in the video so let's see which one it would be not that one it should be this one over here that's 18 seconds so we want the full length video so it can be this one over here so you can just go and hit open and then once it uploads you can just click add to widget and then you will see your video come up over here like this you can also make it a full width one if you want to so instead of having this boxed, we can have it full width. So then the video just stretches out a bit more like that. So that's basically how you can go and create another one. So if we just have a look at this funnel here, we can see I've created another funnel, the Admatic. It's basically the same. It's got the customer reviews like that. And I've just added images in. And then we've got the button. We've got the frequently asked questions. So for this one, I've done it like this. But to be honest with you, the frequently asked questions is better when you actually do it this way.
it just looks cleaner to me so if you want to do that for a new funnel you can just go once again and just copy it from your original funnel and paste it into the new one and then at the bottom once again we've just got the same thing so what is at the top is at the bottom and then over here you can see i've got this section which is basically if we scroll up is basically this section over here so you can see i've just done it for the ab wheel instead so like i said it's really easy to go and create these in all the things I've shown you, you should be able to go and create these funnels now. So I'll just show you a few other different examples of ones that I have created. So let me just go on to a few other ones. So you can see this one is for slimming leggings. So once again, it's just the same thing. So you can just go and see, we've got the leggings over here. We've got some information, we've got a button, see them in action, so that's a video. And then you can see, once again, what customers have to say, the frequently asked questions, and then at the bottom. So you can see for this one, I've changed the top and the bottom, but it's basically the same thing. You can just go and drag the button into the center. So for this one, you can see I've just gone and added like that. And then we've got down the bottom here, we've got it how it is, so the footer that we created. So that's one. Then we've got another one, which is this pulsar lamp. So once again, same thing, just different background and different colors. So you can see I've gone for the list that we've used within this one. So you can see over here in this one, here's the list. So for the pulsar lamp, you can see I've done that, but I just added different icons in. So you can see over here doing the same thing. And then there's a video. Then you can see I've done some frequently asked questions here. So I've just changed them a bit with the background colors and everything like that. But basically the same principles apply to all of these different funnels that you can create and you can create them all within the same domain. So you don't have to have loads of different stores, loads of different one product stores. These are all on the same store and they were all loads of different funnels. Here's another one for a bicycle. So you can see once again, exact same principles for all of these different funnels. So the only downside is if you're using the free version of Cartflows, you can only have three funnels running at once. So you can only have a maximum of three funnels. So that means you can only test three products at once. But if you upgrade to the pro version of Cartflows, you can have as many funnels as you like. Now, what does that mean? if you can't afford the pro version of Cartflows, well basically what that means is you can test a product, if it doesn't work, then what you can do is you can just go and change the complete funnel. So you've got the one funnel that you have, and all you can do, you can just go and edit everything within that funnel to go then and test a new product. So you don't have to go and build a completely new one product store, you just come in, so let's say this one over here, I wanted to go and change this one now, because I've only got three funnels and I can only test three products. I've tested this one, it didn't work. So what I can do is I can just go and start changing this so I can go and start building this as the abomatic one so I can start changing the background start changing the text and all of that stuff so it's a bit more work in that way but at the end of the day if you're going to test a new product you're going to have to build a new funnel anyway so regardless of if you're just testing three products at a time and then constantly changing the funnels so you're changing all of the images all of the copy and all of the text and the font and the colors and all of those types of things for that particular product then you can go and do that or you can go and have loads of different ones at once so like i said this sort of example here where you've got quite a few different ones running at once and also if you just have a look as well like i've already shown you you create a complete checkout and thank you page for each one so if i go to order now on this one it's gonna bring me to the Miss Petite checkout page, and you can see this is a particular checkout page. And also, as I was saying earlier, you can go and offer variations if you have the Cartflows Pro. So you can see over here, we have different variations. So we've got black, medium, black, extra large, black, extra, extra large. So you can go and do that if you have Cartflows Pro. And like I said, I'll leave a link in the description to Cartflows Pro. If we go and have a look at this one, once again, it's gonna be a custom checkout page, just like I showed you how to build with. So this one, I've just gone for clean and simple checkout, just easy, nothing on it. So that's that. And then once again, if we have a look at this one, we can hit order now and it brings us to this checkout page. Once again, the checkout pages are fairly simple, usually just includes something around the particular product. And then if we have a look at this one, so let's go and view this page. Let's view this, so we just hit leave over here. And we can go and see what this one looks like. So let's go and click on view page. And then from here, we can see that we have this one over here. So this one I've added the reviews to the side. Like I said, just using Elementor, it's really easy to just go and drag and drop. But you don't really need to do this stuff on the checkout pages if you don't want to. It's not really that important. And you can see I've just done order bumps here. So if they order two, they get a cheaper price. If they order three, 
they get a cheaper price now you need cartflows pro to do that but if you're just starting out i recommend just going with the free version cartflows just test one product at a time without variations without bumping up the orders like this and just see how you get on maybe once you start actually making some profit then you can go and order cartflows pro so you can always go and upgrade so that's basically how you can go and test multiple different products within one store so now that i've shown you how you can just go and create a new funnel and go and do that for the checkout page and for the thank you page as well so i'll just show you what i mean if we go exit to dashboard over here so let's just hit update on this one and I go exit to dashboard over here. And from here, now we've done the landing page. So I did call it Abomatic earlier, but for some reason it hasn't saved. But if we go back to edit flow, so in the Abomatic flow, now you're gonna go and edit your checkout page. So you're gonna edit your checkout page, you're gonna edit your thank you page. So what you would do is, once again, you would come in here, you would go and import the product. So you can go and create a new category. So this one could be for fitness, fitness category. You go and import the product. And then you just go and do what we've done earlier. So you go and just publish the product. Then you would come into the checkout. So you go edit over here within the checkout. Then when you scroll down, you would go and select the product that you imported using Ali Dropship again. So if whatever you've called it, if you've called it Abmatic, you'd come in here and you'd select the product. So you're basically assigning a product to a particular checkout page. So it's, you've got to make sure that you don't get your checkout page pages mixed up. So for the Abmatic checkout page, you need to have the Abmatic product assigned to it once you import it from AliExpress. For the Wi-Fi Boost checkout page, I've got the Wi-Fi Boost product assigned to that checkout page. So that is how it works. So now that we have had a look at how we can create multiple flows and multiple one product funnels, the next thing that we are going to look at is going to look at the WooCommerce settings. So we're going to look at setting up the payments and all of the settings for WooCommerce so that we can start taking payments when people make a purchase. So from here, just go to WooCommerce and and click on settings and from here we can just go through some of the settings so under general settings you can go and enter in your store address so if you're just running your store from home you can go and put in your home address and you can also go and pick your currency so this is going to be the currency that goes on the front end so it's going to be displayed to the customer so for example I'm in the UK but if I want to market my store towards the US then I can always go and change my currency to United States dollars now with products and shipping you can just skip those because when we import a product from Aliexpress as we've done earlier all of that stuff is just going to come from Aliexpress so we don't need to worry about entering any information in in the product and shipping area we'll do payments after so let's go to emails now now under emails these first three emails here every time a new order is made on your store you will get a notification via email and that's going to come to this email address over here so make sure this is an email address that you're accessing regularly or if it's not make sure you change it to an email address that you will be accessing because every time like I said a new order comes through it will come through to this email address and then you know that you need to go and fulfill that order and that's the same with cancelled and failed orders now if we scroll down over here we have the from address now this is the email address that gets sent to the customer so every time a customer makes a purchase they get sent a confirmation email and that's going to come from here so where it says my wordpress you're going to go to put the name of your store in here and then the from address you can go and put your professional email address so you can go and put the one that we made earlier within SiteGround. And then you can also go and change how they look. So the actual emails that get sent out. So you can go and just change. I would recommend just going for black, just something simple. So in here, you can change this to black. And then where it says footer text, instead of having built with WooCommerce, you can go and put in something like, thank you from, and then your store. So you can go and do that. And then if we just hit save, we can go and preview how that looks. So if we just scroll down, click here to preview your email template. So that's how your email template is gonna look. Thank you from your store. So, so you can see where it says my WordPress, we will go and change this in a minute. So as you can see, over here we've got my wordpress now we will go and change that at the end so that is basically going to be the name of our store so what also shows up on the front end within the url so like i said we'll change that in a moment so that's basically emails so once we have done the emails then we have accounts and privacy and the main thing that you need to change in here is your privacy policy so you've got your privacy page over here so what we need to do is select our privacy policy page that we created 
and then just go and hit save changes. So now anytime somebody goes to the checkout, if they click on the privacy policy, it brings them over to that privacy policy that we created. So now we have payments and this is obviously a very integral part. So in here you can see we don't actually have any payments installed. So what we need to do, we need to install some plugins. So go to plugins over here and click on add new. And then from here, the first one we're gonna install is gonna be the Stripe. So we're gonna go and type in Stripe. So just type in Stripe and you will see the WooCommerce Stripe payment gateway. So Stripe basically is a payment gateway that allows you to accept credit and debit cards. So just go and install Stripe. And once it has finished installing, just go and hit activate on that. And now we're gonna be able to accept debit and credit cards. So once you install Stripe, go back to plugins and click on add new. And this time we are gonna go and type in PayPal. So just go and type in PayPal in here. So we're just gonna go and type that in. And you're gonna go and install this one, WooCommerce PayPal Checkout. So go and install this one as well. And once that has installed, we're gonna go and click activate once again. So once that has been activated, now we have PayPal and Stripe activated. So we can go to WooCommerce and we can go back to settings over here. And from here, we can go to payments. So we're gonna go back to payments. And what we're gonna do is we will see PayPal checkout is now on, and then we also have Stripe. So make sure you turn Stripe on as well. So now all we need to do is go and set up. So we need to connect our PayPal account and our Stripe account to our store. So for PayPal, all you need to do is click on manage. And then once you click on manage, you can go set up or link an existing PayPal account. So when you go and click on this, you will then be brought over to this page that will say connect a PayPal account. And then you basically just log in to your PayPal account. It's really easy. If you don't have a PayPal account, you can just go through this setup and then you basically have linked your PayPal account to your store. And that's all you have to do when it comes to setting up PayPal. Now with Stripe, so that you can accept debit and credit cards, all you have to do is go back to payments within WooCommerce, scroll down to Stripe and then go and click on manage over here. Then once you click on this, you will see over here, so let me just go and delete this, you will see that we've got test mode and you've got test publishable key and test secret key. We're just gonna untick this and then you've got live publishable key and live secret key. So what you need to do is you need to go and create a Stripe account. So you just go to the sign up page for Stripe and you just sign up like normal, it's easy, just enter in your email and pick a password and then enter in your details. Then once you have done that, you will come over to your Stripe dashboard. So it will look a little something like this. So then you just go and click on developers, click on API keys, and you can see right now I'm in the test version, but basically you will have the live version of these API keys. So you have the publishable key and you have the secret key. So all you need to do is just copy these, but make sure you're not in the test version. So just copy these, and then you're just gonna paste them in where it says live publishable key and live secret key, and just make sure that test mode isn't enabled. So you can go and enable test mode if you want to just go and test out your store. So then all you need to do is just go and click save changes, and that's basically it. Then your PayPal payments and your card payments are both set up, and you're ready to start accepting payments. So a couple of last really important things that I need to show you. Firstly, we're gonna go and have a look at the general settings, and these are really important, so make sure you follow along for this part before you actually start running ads to your store or trying to get traffic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to settings and we're gonna go over to general. And basically in general settings where you've got site title, yours will probably say my WordPress and it will have something over here. So what you can do is in site title, you're gonna put the name of your domain name. So you're gonna put the name of your store. And then in tagline, you can just put a tagline about what you're selling. So if it's just a general store, you can just go and put the best home appliances or something like that. So just go and do that and then you can just go and hit save changes. Now next up, you need to go and pick one of your funnels as your homepage. So if we go to reading over here, and then for you, it's just gonna say your latest post as displays as your homepage, but you wanna pick a static page. So this is really important. So go and pick a static page and just go and pick one of your landing pages for one of your products. So you can see I've just picked the Wi-Fi booster and I've just put save changes. So now that's just always gonna be my homepage. Otherwise, you will just have a blank homepage. So if someone goes over to the homepage by mistake, it's just gonna be completely blank, which is just gonna look really weird. So like I said, just go and pick one of the one product pages that you you have created and then 
in permalinks over here just make sure you go and choose post name so that basically just means it's the name of your domain and then after here it's going to be wi-fi boost or whatever it is if it's one of these other ones like month name or day name it's going to look really weird it's going to have the date up in the url just which just looks really odd and it kind of puts people off purchasing if something doesn't look quite right so now that we have done that another thing that we want to look at is how to actually go and fulfill orders so to fulfill an order all you need to do is go and create a 100 off coupon code so if we go over to coupons over here so we were going to create a test order so you can go and create a 100 off coupon code so if we just go to add coupon and you can just go and call it whatever you want so just call it test coupon or something like that and then you can go and make it a fixed percentage so go and make it 100 off and then just put it as usage is just one so it can only be used once and let's just go and publish it and then basically just go to a incognito version of your site and just go and create a test order and then once you have done that then all you need to do is go and have a look at how to fulfill the order so if we just go to orders over here we can see i've just created this test order so if i go and click on this test order now and all we can do is you just basically just go and click on place order automatically so if you just go and press that and then it will start running. Now you can see for me, because I'm not logged into AliExpress, it won't let me do it. So if I just go and click on login, and now that I have logged in, I can go and click on continue and it's gonna see, say, checking authorization. So it's just gonna go and process that order. So you can see for me, it's saying addresses limited exceeded. So basically when you fulfill a lot of orders, it adds a new address every time. So what you can do is you can just go and delete all of the addresses or you can open up the shipping details page and you can delete the addresses one by one. So like I said, every time you fulfill an order, it adds a new address and AliExpress eventually can only add so many addresses. So let's just go and try that again. I've deleted some of the addresses now. So let's just go and click on place order automatically again. And now it should go and be able to go and do that. So you can see it's cleaning the shopping cart it's adding the products to the shopping cart, it's filling the shipping address, and now as you can see, it is entering all of the information in on its own. So as you can see, it entered all of that information on its own, and then I just have to go and pick England because for some reason, sometimes if the person misses out some information when they actually purchase the product, then it won't work. But you can see it just done all of that automatically, and all I have to do now is click place order, and it will go and send that out to the customer. So it's really easy to actually go and fulfill the orders. So once I actually just go and hit purchase, this will stop running. Then once you have done that, all you need to do is go to processing over here and just change that to completed and then just click update. Then after a few days from AliExpress, you can come back into the order and you can hit get tracking and that will basically go and email the tracking to the customer's email address. So it will take the tracking number directly from AliExpress and it will email it to them and then they can go and track their order through the website 17 track, which is what is used by AliExpress. So that is how you can go and get the tracking as well. So now that I have shown you all of that, you're basically up and ready and running to go with your store. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial about a one product Time general, times general store and now you have a bit more insight in how you can create one product funnels from the same website. Now for the last part of the tutorial, I'm just gonna do a little bonus of how you can add variable products if you have Cart Flows Pro. So anybody that's upgrading to Cart Flows Pro and wants to go and test multiple different products and have unlimited amounts of funnels and also do variable products, I'm gonna go and show you how to do that now. So just for the last part of the tutorial, I just wanna show you how you can go and add the variable products to your single page checkout. So for example, this one over here, these leggings, you can see they come in different sizes. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you are going to need the pro version of Cartflows. So if we just go over to Cartflows over here, it's $299 per year. So maybe once you start making some sales, you can always think about upgrading to this. And I will leave a link in the description to this as well. And I think it's pretty decent value for everything you get. The fact that you can have unlimited amounts of funnels. So you can go and test a hundred different products with all different one product funnels. You can also go and do upsells, downsells. And like I said, you can also go and have variable products like this. So I just wanna show you how this sort of works if you do have Cartflows Pro. So basically, 
in the product over here. So if I just go and click on the product, we can go and see that we've got multiple different variations. So under the, so when you import it, like the one we imported earlier, the one that had different plugs, this one has got different sizes. So in the variations, you can leave them this time. You don't have to go and delete them all. So we've got black and then we've got all of the different sizes, small, medium, large, all the way up to extra, extra large. So with this, all you have to do then basically is when you go into your flow, then you can go to your checkout and you can just hit edit. And then in your checkout, all you would do is select your product. So we've selected the product like we do normally. And then just down the bottom, you just have to hit enable variations. And then you can go and decide how you want them to be displayed. So show variations in line, basically means they'll be in line like this. So that's all you need to do. And then you've got restrict user to purchase all products. So that basically just means that they can only order one size. So you can go and turn that off and then that would mean they could order small, medium, large and extra large. So if they wanted to, or depending on what product it was, they could order black and white. If you just go and turn this one off and then you can do let user select one, sorry, let user select multiple product from all options, then they can go and pick black and white, let's say. So you can go and do that. And another great thing about Cartflows Pro is over here in the flows, you get the upsell and the downsell. So you can go and edit these. So I'll just show you what these look like. So with the upsell, this is just the basic one. When they go and they've finished the checkout, then they actually go and get the upsell. So what from here they can do is they can go and click add to order and or no thanks, I'll pass. So they can add it to order. So you can go and assign a product. So if you just go into the upsell, you can go and assign a product to upsell as well. So for example, these leggings, maybe I would want to go and upsell a top to go with it or something like that. So then I could go and offer an upsell and they can hit add to order. So I thought I just would show you that just because I did show you this earlier and it is just a cool way that you can go and offer variable products and you can also go and offer things like upsells, downsells, and also, like I said, multiple different one product funnel. So you, instead of just being limited to three and having to change them in order to test, you can just go and do 50 all on one store. So that is basically it for this tutorial. I hope you did enjoy the tutorial and it has given you an insight on how you can test multiple products in the one product format, but also from a general store. So how you can combine those two stores together so you don't have to keep creating new stores every time you want to test a product in the one product store format. So if you have enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure to share this with anybody else that's interested in learning how to create a one product times general store. And I will see you all in the next video.